that's that's rapid massive, fire. Massive. It's massive. Huge. in his face, he knows that was a big one. Happy holidays, table tennis family. A massive welcome to those watching on YouTube and watching on TTE.TV. It is round four of the SBL Premier Division. And boy, oh boy, do we have an early present for you to unwrap today. You join us from the Ping Pod Bristol, Southwest England on this wintry Saturday, 16th of December for a festive throwdown between Team TTD and North. Ayrshire Table Tennis Club. Firstly, let's check out the tables. So you can see this clash is between the two teams posted at fourth and fifth in the division. So a mid-table clash here. Let's go to the lineups. Let's show you who we've got. TTD first, Callum, the Welsh Dragon, following two impressive wins last match, continues to lead TTD off at position one. Position two, Everybody's favorite, Umir, the pocket rocket Mathor, rounds the team off at two. Let's see if he could start that launch sequence early today, blast his way to what would be two massive wins for the team. And then Tom the Frog at number three. It's a big one. Looking then at North Ayrshire Table Tennis Club, making the trip down south are oh, two homegrown Scottish sensations and a very, very slick Swede. Hugo in at number one. He comes from Eslov, Sweden. It's going to be some big games, especially between him and Callum. We're looking forward to that. Colin then, ranked at number two in Scottish men's, followed closely by Martin Johnson, who's the number one under-21 player in Scotland. My pick for match of the day, the one I'm looking most forward to, Pocket Rocket versus Martin. I think that has the potential to be an absolute highlight fest. Let's have a look then. Who is up first? We have Callum, the Welsh Dragon, leading TTD off at number one. Martin then in at number two. Slight age uh, discrepancy. Callum, five years the oldest. Callum, obviously, we've said it before, long-term Welsh number one. Martin in at three in senior men's. Battle of the righties here. So. Uh, a bit different from last match. Those of you that joined us a few weeks back where there was a few lefties. This is a battle of the righties. It's a battle of Britain as well. Welsh versus the Scottish. And we're going to have, as always, a few of the gang coming up and joining us. I have heard some rumours that we have a certain German in the building who might come up and say hello. We're going to work. We also think there might be a beast who's been released from the zoo in the building. I've got my eyes on the comments as well. Shout me out, guys. Where are we coming from today? I've got love from North Korea. That's fantastic. Rush, watching from Russia, Sweden here. So you're going to be hopefully cheering on Hugo Bali here. Let's go. As always, if there's any comments, questions, anything you've got, shout them out in there. Glasgow, love from Belgium, love from Australia, love from Germany, India, Norway. This is amazing. Thank you so much for being with us. We are looking forward to a big day of table tennis. Mr. Chutney, seven minutes down the road. Get yourself here now. You can still make it before it starts. Spain. Hey, Joe, you still playing tournaments? Uh, I am, but I'm nowhere near as good as these guys. Hence why I'm in the booth talking. Ukraine, let's go TTD, make me proud. Has everyone seen who has made that comment? It's our very own Dane. He's in the chat. Give him some love. Kenya here, Denmark. Charlie Callas from Nolan Briz. What's going on, Charlie? Great to have you. Italy, love from the Philippines. Sweden, although it says Sweden. I'm assuming that's a, uh, a spelling error. Hi from Hungary. Cheers from Croatia. I'm on my way back. The tech guy is on his way back. You know who has more holidays than Neymar is the tech guy. He's always somewhere, always traveling. 
Australia, Ireland, Sudan. When's the chairman having his debut? That is a great question. Um, the 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 problem with the chairman making his debut in the SBL Prem is there's a definite jump up of quality, and I don't want to give any spoilers uh, towards a video that is going to be hitting your uh, computers within the next few weeks. The TTD team knockout, but obviously our team here uh, were playing in that. And the chairman, he talked a lot of smack. I imagine the first two minutes of that video is just going to be the chairman calling out every single member and he plays in the first round. The question is, does he play in the second round? Who knows? Romania, tech guys in Tenerife, Ireland. This is fantastic. Hi, man. Daniel says he's wondering if he can play versus Dan. He'll put $1,000 for the winner. You know what? Dan gets some absolute slander in this chat. That performance versus Victor Guanxi last time out was massive. He was hitting rockets from everywhere. What's happening on that main table? Looks like the ball's gone underneath. We're going to be going shortly, guys. Callum versus Martin. It's going to be a very, very fun one. Let me throw it down to that main camera. Callum to serve then, first match. Let's see if he can get Team TTD off to a winning start. Whether Martin... Martin's one of those players, if you haven't seen him play before, he's like when you create a player on a video game and you put all of your points towards power. He is awesome to watch when he is fully flying. Early power there from Martin. Next point, I'm going to bring it back to the booth quickly just to show you who we've got in here first up. Gaffer. How are we feeling about today? We're very confident after the win a couple of weeks ago against John Top of Glasgow. I think we needed that. It was a big sigh of relief. And the guys are confident now. So we know this is going to be a massive test against three international players. But I'm confident. You've seen in the comments, a certain Dane has commented saying, is the Dane playing in the TTD team knockout? Well, we shall find out very soon. A couple of weeks until that video drops, just after Christmas, that's the plan. That's a nice flick there from uh, Martin, coming in, sending Callum out wide forehand early on. It's one of these things in modern table tennis, I think, where that backhand flicks becomes such a pivotal part of the game. It almost you can get a lot of joy by coming in and playing that slightly weaker shot in terms of power, but better positioning from, from the forehand. Mm. Yeah, the thing is Martin, Martin is an aggressive player. We know this from, he's played in TTSL previously. Um, so he's very well known to us at Table Tennis Daily. And he's, he's not gonna beat around the bush here. He might be a little bit you know, nervous first match in. You can see him jumping around a little bit there on the spot. But uh, once he gets going, he can, he can hit those rockets. Four all in the first game here. Quite tight, quite cagey. Callum there, just, just taking that ball a little bit too late. You can kind of see he changed his mind there. He wanted to give it the big forehand, but tried to go for the slow spin and actually the indecisiveness has let him down. Ball went in the net. One of those big forehands from Martin there. Yeah. yeah, we gave him the billing. He said he had big power, showing it early. <laughs> just as that one set up, I was just thinking there, come on, that's, a, that's one that's got to be killed. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice setup by Callum, sent it straight to that crossover point. Martin improved really, really well, actually, and got a 
Got a sort of a chop back on it. Didn't quite scrape over the net there. Half long push there by Callum into the middle. Got the job done. Martin managed to get on the attack early with a lovely backhand flip. As soon as Callum can get that forehand in, though, that is his strength. Needs to be getting that in where possible if he wants to win this match. Yeah. Oh. The exact same can be said for Martin. This is yeah, like these two. Both of them have got Thor's hammer in their hand. I'm looking forward to if, uh, if we end up going forehand to forehand. Yes, that will be a big one. <laughs> they might just keep it on the forehand as well, just as like a bit of an ego challenge as well. <laughs> Half long they're picked up by Callum. Thought we were going to get it there. <laughs> Two flicks of the net. Tight margins this game. You can see now, there's a comment, where is Dan? You can see him on the bench there. The beast next to him. Chairman as well. Yeah. Bench is looking strong, five deep there. That was a flat to hear him a bit louder. Cheering on the Welsh Dragon here. He needs it in this first game. But you can see he's, he's not quite woken up just yet. Martin's coming out the, the stronger at the moment, 9-7 up. Is the beast playing? Unfortunately, no, he's not. He actually plays in Germany. Uh, and the ruling, same as the day he plays in Denmark. Good pressure from Callum. Managed to force Martin back. Yeah, Dane and uh, the Beast can't. They're currently locked from the leagues that they play in, from playing in England as well. I'll go back to the side camera. I like this side camera because you can really see the depth on the serves. Pinned him in well there. Found, found the elbow of Callum, Scottish player, sets himself up with two set points here. See Callum just doing a bit of shadow play there with that backhand. Oh. Strong start from Martin. Gets North Ayrshire off to a one set lead in this one. It's very interesting. It seemed to be a, a, a bit more of who could get in first. Yep. See, like that last point. Nice, tight, short serve um, from Martin. And, and for Callum, really, or for, for Martin in the, in, in the flip of this, is that serve receiver's either got to be touch tight, short, so that you can't just allow uh, your opponent to just stand there and, and deliver a massive forehand, or intentionally go long, go as deep as you can into the table. Yeah, I think I think that's where Callum's struggling a little bit. He's trying to touch short, and they're just drifting a bit long, and it's allowing Martin to, to get that big forehand in. And he's gone he's gone cross court a few times, going yeah. from inside out there into Callum's backhand, um, which has won him a couple of points. So I'd like to see Callum a little bit more lively, as mm. you said, Joe. Maybe just just push it long maybe just chuck it long um, or, or be a bit more positive and, and chuck a little flick in there um, just to try and mix things up because a couple of points there are a bit too easy for Martin yeah. but. I think that's a part of the modern game is, is we all do it when we're training is, is you, you train to hunt the half long so anything we sniff it out anything yeah, that's yeah. right on the edge of that, that table line you really want to be aggressive on and those long pushes Actually, what they do is, is either you force Martin to take a step back and then deliver his power, or he doesn't take the step back and he has to lean back, and therefore his power goes up and it's tends to be a slower ball. Let's see if Callum starts to, starts to try and pick that up. I think Callum needs to play a little bit more into, into that middle backhand, um, although Martin does look for the forehand from the backhand side as well, so we might start to see him try and keep it a bit shorter into the forehand side. But... I think Callum just needs to get going a little bit here. Um, Martin just imposed that little bit more towards the end of that first set, which just took him over the line. So here we go. Martin to serve, second set. Oh, that was a better serve received though. It was, yeah. Touching to the backhand side this time. It worked, but Martin just getting the luck and just dribbling over the net there. 
Callum's taken a 2-1 lead after Martin missed the backhand and Callum got his forehand in. Yeah, still a bit static there from Callum. Maybe he was expecting the return into the middle or backhand side. You could see kind of stepped around already and then Martin utilised the wide forehand on that backhand flick well. Oh. Yeah, it's a big forehand. Massive, I love it. I was about to say I had the pleasure of playing against Martin, but it wasn't really a pleasure um, at uh, one of the knockouts a few years back, and he just destroyed me. Are you forcing him back there, though? Yeah, that's better from Callum. You can see he's not quite unleashing as, uh, as a Scottishman is at the moment, but he just needs to get into the game, grind out some points, and then he can start unleashing those forehands oh. as well. Went for the slow spin. Yeah, just missing by a margin there. But so's points. You know, they, they can mean a lot. They all mean the same. It's two forehands now. You know, it's critical. This is a critical match, this first one here with our number one against their number two. And uh, really, we want to want to see Callum winning this. And uh, at the moment, that is proving a tough task. Yeah. <laughs> it's the second time Martin has gone for that big backhand counter and he has missed. So something that Callum could definitely go to more often. The better touch there. Get it there. I didn't really... Uh fully appreciate how hard Callum hits the ball as well and how clean it is, the trajectory, until we got to see him up close last week. Has to start getting that forehand in, fellas. Oh. Top reverse. Oh. Yeah, Mart hunting it down. Martin's Callum in with the Fang Shen Dong. Mm. Beautiful flip. Read it well. And again, exactly the same kind of principle what we talked about, the serve receive sometimes going long. Those long serves just force your opponent. They can't then gamble and step in early. That was a nice, nice retrieve there on the backhand side. I think that caught Martin unawares there. He was expecting maybe just a bit more of a lob shot, but Callum put the pressure on well and managed to get that point. We're now 6 all in the second set. He's a close set again. Martin going to the backhand serve. Yep, unforced error there from the North Ayrshire player. I think this one's also going to be a tight set. It was neck and neck like this in the first set, and then that is where Martin just just stepped over um, and took that first one. So maybe it's going to be Callum this time round. Another unforced error there by Martin. Again, a slightly longer serve receive for someone who is as yeah. aggressive as Martin is. I mean, he's like a pit bull. Anything that's half long, he's going to get on. Start to bang long at him, and at least that way he has to take a step back. Yeah, it it's sometimes feels like it's, a, it's an easier option. Um, you'd think that people are going to be able to hit a big topspin off of a, just a long push, but it's actually going to be more difficult. Martin's off the table. <laughs> right off the frame there. This is better from Callum, though. Starting to impose himself. If Callum can just get this one over yes. the line, get this second set, we'll see him just relax a little bit more and then we'll see him hopefully take this one. But a lot to play for yet. Oh, so good on that backhand flick receiving me, Martin. Yeah, he's strong with it, especially when he's getting Callum wide forehand as well. That one, that one wasn't as wide as we've previously seen, but still catches him. Serving at 
half long. Yeah, he, he's, he's all out. You know, yeah. he doesn't hold anything back there. Just big counters. I think that's probably the third big counter hit that he's tried and, and he's failed on. He's probably got a couple on as well, but it's a good tactic for Callum to, to spin and dribble one in every now and again. Oh, yeah. oh. We've got a replay on that. Got a quick replay. Whilst these guys do a towel down. <laughs> that was a lovely shot there by Marty, and I thought it was a bit of a softer. Lovely touch game. Oh, uh, Martin straight just down the line. The space. That was beautiful. So 10 8 here after the towel down, every six points. <laughs> Callum serve. Should really be taking this on one of these two here. You have to stop the backhand flick here, I feel. Yeah. So you're going to go short serve into the forehand, maybe? Yeah. Open. Oh! Little flick of the net. It's a lovely finish though from uh, from Martin. Again, taking the uh, once you have an opponent back, it can be a really it's quite risky, but it can be a really good idea to try and take the ball as early as possible. Yeah. Just give them no time. See now, I would say just chucking a long serve yeah. into the backhand Absolutely. side. Absolutely. But I don't think that's Callum's tactics here. Oh, massive. The Welsh Dragon levels it, 1-1. One, one. TTD bench, all upstanding for that one. Big rally to settle that 11-9. Massive set then from the Welsh Dragon. Leveled this up, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that was a big fight there. Another really close set. Um, first two, two sets now have been really close. Got a comment there saying the British Premier League is the highest league in the GP. It is, yes, the gold standard. Jake there, having some issues with the video and we're gonna get our tech guys onto that. Check in. Yeah, I think for this, tactics for this next set, I, I do, there was a couple of points where Callum was able to keep the uh, keep the first point, first part of the point short, yeah. and then look for that sniff in. I'd like to see a little bit longer on serve, receive some of them, and a little bit longer on uh, serves, just every now and again. Keep your opponent guessing. Um, Martin's just so strong when he stood forward and leans forward through the ball. It's almost like yeah. when he gets in, it's very it's difficult to then get control of the rally again yeah it's it's it needs to be a bit more unpredictable here Callum mm -hmm. um, because yeah if he's serving to the same places Martin's going to get in with that great backhand flick and that sets him up really well for the rest of the point so Callum needs to needs to make sure that he is the one being the aggressor and he's the one getting first third set then. someone spotted a German in the crowd yep yeah, he's here with us What do you think, Gaffer? Can we get him up for 30 seconds at some point to say hello? I'm sure we can bring him up, yeah. He loves the fans. Again, that backhand flick mm, sets him starts up, so, everything up right? so well. Either Callum needs to, needs to be a bit more positive on the back of that flick, um, or he just needs to try and serve maybe a little bit different. Yeah. Again, one option's exactly the same thing. Oh, there we go. It's a long, long one. All right. Martin gets a, gets a little bit lucky there. I think maybe a top edge or just not a clean, clean hit. And he's just put Callum off. But right. he's gone two new up in the third. One of the options that you have is serving similarly to where Martin is right now from wide forehand. It's a lot easier to serve to short forehand. Yeah. Once you've done that. That's a great tactic there by Callum. He's kept his touch nice and short. He's then got a long push back and then that enables him to get the spinny backhand in. And we know that Martin's going to go for that big counter. So spin to win, I think is definitely going to be a tactic here. Good receive there, long receive. Yeah, into that middle, just making Martin a little bit off balance and he's just not got that forehand into play. 
I toss it over from Callum. It's yeah. gone long. Yeah. See? There we go. We know what we're talking about in this commentary booth, don't we? Somebody's got the stream on down there, I think. <laughs> Big shot, TT. We love battles like these. We do, Jamal. Shout out to you. Oh. I mean, that backhand flick is a thing of beauty. We might have to get him back here to do a masterclass on this. <laughs> but it's the aggression, right? He, he steps in. Absolutely canes a backhand flick, steps out, but still stays low, leans forward, and then that enables him to whip the next one even harder. A backhand flick from Callum. Mm. Has worked well there. Puts it back into his forehand. Martin just not prepared enough to get that one. Now that's a great, great mix up there by Callum, because he, he's done exactly the same tactic there. He stepped round to play a backhand flick, but instead of doing the pressure shot. He's done it a bit slower, and Martin's not ready for that one. Callum, you can see that he's he's got himself into this game now. He's feeling a lot more confident, mixing up his play, taking now a more comfortable lead at 6-3 in this third. Approach, Martin. Mm. Yeah. I think that Callum would have been destroying that one, <laughs> but maybe a little bit put off. Maybe thought, oh, this is going to be a bit too easy. In the end, it worked out. Great to see from Callum. Serve was a long serve as well there, and he's managed to get that touch in play. Jack there saying that these guys wouldn't stand a chance against some of the local league bats. I know what you mean. <laughs> Some of those pimples. Oh. Martin chucks in the long serve there. Yeah. Catching Callum. Callum. Yeah. Both of these. Again, just as a general comment against someone, if you're playing against them and they're flicking really, really well and they're nice and confident and they're putting you under pressure, serve long. Yeah. Open up the rally. Big umpire call there, Let. <laughs> on the fish. You gonna catch anything? Oh. Not quite this one. Martin doing well, dragging this back in. Every set here has been so tight, hasn't it? Which player on this occasion is just going to take it again? Yeah, he reads the float serve well there, Martin. Gets that forehand flick wide into Callum's forehand and wins a point. Seven all. Love the passion as well. You can see what it means to both of them. Great receive. You can hear Martin saying the ball just dives. He's putting so much backspin on this on this serve so that Callum can't attack it. Callum reads it, comes in, butchers it himself, adds to Martin's spin. Not only that, sends it straight back to the hip. It's really hard to just hit. remember, Joe, that these guys were actually teammates for for a while at uh, Archway Peterborough. And so they probably know each other's game very well. So that's maybe why it's a little bit more cagey. Um, obviously being the first match on as well, but you can see they're kind of, they're reading each other's game really well actually. And that could be why. Big Except big forehands. <gasps> the bench loved it. The crowd loves it. We all loved it. Callum 9-7 on his serve. Ivan saying love from Malaysia. We've got a lot of places we need to go and do a summer camp. Gaffer. Absolutely, we've got Thailand in there, Malaysia. Let us know in the comments where you are watching from and we'll give you a shout out. Massive long serve. Gets three set points, the Welsh Dragon, to take this and put TTD into a 2-1 lead in this first match. Crucial first match. Come for the long serve. 
Callum takes it. 2 1. Again, that match though, very, very tight. All so cagey. It gets to about 7 all, and then one of them has yeah. just been, has just taken it up. Um, just that notch there to take that set. So Callum now in a 2 1 lead, looking a lot more confident. It's great to see. Yes. Yeah, Big from both of them. Both of them have very similar games where they're, they're most comfortable attacking and, and leading the dance almost. So if you can stop them uh, getting in so early, again, Callum doing exactly what we want him to do, yeah. serve long. Yeah, same with Martin. Martin caught Callum a few yeah. times as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's keeping that unpredictable factor because I feel like if Martin, if you're giving him the same shots every time, he's, he's going to be on them. He is going to be winning points left, right and centre. But when you can mix it up, which Callum has done a lot better in that third set, he's getting a lot more joy from that couple of long serves, pushing longer as well now, and his touch, he's able to keep that touch shorter where he couldn't in that first set, and that is winning him a lot more points. Yes, yes. See if we can see who's given the team talks. Uh, the frog now, oh, it was, it was the founder, now it's the frog. You can't really get a better technical bench than that, can you? Yeah, you've got Beast in there as well. What do you think the chairman's probably saying? <laughs> Just clamp it. <laughs> Yeah, the German there. The German's on the drum. The German's on the drum. Oh, that's fantastic to see. He still loves it. If he could, he would definitely still be part of this team. Great crowd engagement going on now. All adding to this atmosphere for these guys. So we love to hear it. And these these two players are great because they get bigger in the fire, right? They get better oh, in the bigger atmospheres. We're going to hear some big shows now yeah. from both players, I'm sure. Here we go, we've got some locations coming in now. We've got Belgium, UK, France, Austria, Manchester, Boone, Germany, Romania. Thanks for watching, guys. We love all the support. Look at the net. Slow down in the pace. Yeah, Callum was just trying to keep that ball in, wasn't he, really? And was just kind of hoping Martin might miss or he was waiting until he could get his big forehand in. But Martin does well, takes the first point. That's, that's that one there where maybe instead of going for the spin, he could just step in and, and, yeah. and kill it off a little bit quicker. It's a lovely short touch. Martin coming in, just touching it straight back. Martin does seem to get an early lead quite quickly, but Callum, he puts the fight in there and uh, makes sure that Martin doesn't run away with it. Alan there, that was a nice, uh, served it, almost baited the backhand flick out of Martin, then knew he wanted to pivot there. Oh, that's a good placement. It's very good placement. He's caught him twice there now, going to that right hip of Martin, knowing that Martin's going to try and lean left, step left and play that forehand. And then that opens up wide forehand. You can send him back that way. Yeah, absolutely. A nice backhand there from Callum. Just opening up the table. He's exposed wide forehand a couple of times now. Of course, although Martin's strongest shot is the forehand, actually, wide forehand, I think he's not his strongest. Oh. There we go. Just goes to just goes to show you there. He went for the big round of the net, yeah. just misses. Callum taking a comfortable 4-2 lead in this fourth set. Yeah. I did predict it would be a 3-1. We'll have, to, we'll have to see that prediction in the highlights just to know that I wasn't telling Porky Pies there. Oh. Oh. From Scotland, we'd love that one. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, he, he will keep on swinging no matter what yeah. the score. Short side of the table, that one as well. Sent it up the line. You heard the power on it. So hard to know where those high toss serves are going. But Martin loves to step in with that backhand flick if he can. Oh, the long serve. Yeah, I think he would have had him as well. It's a shame that that didn't land. But we're back at 4-4 again. A tied set. Yes. <laughs> nice play there by Welsh Dragon. Yeah. You can see what Martin was thinking as well, trying to pin Callum in that corner and then go wide forehand. Both doing very similar tactics to each other. And for the backhand serve. <laughs> really good 
see swing was like he was trying to hit a home run. <laughs> maybe, maybe running out of answers here, Martin. He's just going for broke, going for big. It's a clever guide there. Oh! <laughs> You know, I don't think I've seen many better at the flat slap yeah. winners than, than Callum. Yeah. He hits that ball so well. We've got a timeout here by the North Ayrshire player as 7-4 as Callum takes a 7-4 lead. Let's have a look at these uh, comments then. Jamal, big shot. Callum's being very smart with his placement. Exactly, yeah. Echoing what the gaffer just said. Yeah, putting a lot into that right hit of Callum. Uh, of, of Martin, sorry, knowing that Martin wants to play that big forehand. That way you can make him take a step to his left. It opens up the rest of the rest of the table. And then in that last one, once he had him away from the table, Callum just keeping that ball in the, uh, in the backhand. Yeah, absolutely. We've got someone from Antarctica in the comments. Hope your broadband's good. <laughs> got watches from Prague, Ukraine. That's a good question there. I haven't been following the TTD team for a while. How is the team doing relative to its own expectations? That is a great question. That is a very good question. I'll try and answer it really quickly before the play comes in. <laughs> um, we're doing very well. We had TTSL played for a couple of seasons. Um, we were in British League originally, and then the dreaded COVID hit. Um, we needed to change things up a little bit, but now we are back at British League at the Summit, playing in the top division. So yeah, we're, we're very happy with where we are right now. Thank you for that question. And since when has Callum been on Team TTD? Well, you went out into the summer transfer market, didn't you? Yeah, we had to because of the restrictions on some of our other players, Dane and Beast. We had to get another big hitter in. And we know Callum well. He's only over the border to us in Bristol, um, in Wales. And he started that point strong there. Mm. Timeout maybe hasn't worked for Martin. Hot potatoes watching at Olmo. Good luck to them. We had a great time hosting them. Yeah. Damien, to see him up close was uh, pretty special. Oh. 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 oh! Massive point. Let's have the replay. Martin's in the wall. Look at this. On the fish. Great feeling for him back there. The Welsh Dragon yeah. with a fist pump. He knows the end is near if he can just keep his focus here. Yeah. That's a great receive as well from Callum. Six points then. Six points to secure the first win for Callum, the Welsh Dragon. Can he get it done at first attempt? Let's hope so. Some touch play. Callum's in with a forehand. Oh, and he does it. Broke. Crowd love it. The Welsh Dragon taking the first one against Martin Johnson. It's a big win. Massive to get the team onto the scoreboard, right? Yeah, absolutely huge. That first match is crucial. It sets the tone for the rest of the guys here. Huge win by Callum. It was a bit cagey, those first couple of sets. Mm. It could have gone either way. But as you can see there, Callum getting into his stride. Martin missing a couple of those big hitter shots. Yeah. And Callum taking that match 3-1. Well, it's always tough when you play someone so aggressive, right? And they're hitting early on. You almost feel like you're just at kind of a firing range, trying to react, almost hoping that they kind of their level dips and then you can start to feel it. Yeah, absolutely. Pocket Rocket starting to get warmed up. Pocket's warming up, yeah. I'm sure that he is filled even more with confidence if that's at all possible by that win there. Um, I was speaking to him earlier before this match and he is just raring to go. He is very excited to play this strong Swedish player in Hugo Tongren. Mm. There's going to be fireworks. Yes, I was looking at some of Hugo's highlights from previous matches this season. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a very, very good player. Typical Swede, very, very good feeling, good creative player. Let's have a look at these comments then. What do we got going? Are we bringing the Dane and the Beast back for next season? We're trying our best. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a big ask um, because both of them are committed to teams in other countries. Um, but we know that given the chance, they would both love to be back and we would, we would love to have them back. So watch this space and uh, we'll find out more 
early on in the uh, in the new year. Hypersurge says he recently got back into table tennis in the UK and it's all thanks to TTE. That is brilliant to hear. Just got started in the league again, having a blast. If you're ever in the Southwest, Hypersurge, come on down, come and visit us. Yeah, there's a table waiting for you at Ping Pod Bristol here at the home of Table Tennis Daily. So come on down, meet some of the guys here. Yeah, the captain as well, some love for the captain. Uh, Captain obviously just having a bit of a break from table tennis. Yeah, understand it. yeah. Captain again, he's part of the more extended team these days, but um, he loves his TT. He's just just got married last year, um, and yeah, he's uh, take a little break away from from his table tennis. And just one final one there is the frog going to play today? He is. He is up next following this match with Pocket. Let's have a look at the uh, head to heads then give you some idea of the players that are going to be playing. Pocket Rocket, 16 years, the elder up against North Ayrshire's number one, Hugo Tournament. Highest national ranking, 12th for Pocket in England. Hugo just about to break into the top 50 in Sweden. Both righties, you can see Pocket in at number two today. What was the decision there, two. Gaffer, to... Uh, He's in it too. So in, in this league, in Premier British League, you can interchange your twos and threes. Um, but we felt that Pocket wanted to, to have a go at this guy, at this Swedish player. Um, and so that was that was a decision made. But our team is, is relatively, you know, strength and depth, probably Callum arguably, um, just ahead of, of, of Tom and Pocket there. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty confident that either of these guys can do the job. But I'm just going to say one comment about the, na the highest national ranking there of, of Hugo. It's amazing, isn't it? The strength of Swedish uh, table tennis, that he's uh, he's not actually made it into the top 50 in Sweden. Um, such, a, such a strength and depth out there yeah. in Sweden. Look at that backhand. As always, good feeling. Look at him just changing the pace on that really easily. Pocket already looking around. This is going to be a good one. I'm very torn here whether or not to stay with you in the commentary booth though. Joe will go down and watch this match firsthand, but I think I'll stay for one more match here and I think we'll swap it up. And uh, I've had a little word with him and we're going to get good old Mr. Beast in, uh, in this commentary booth. Our Mr. Beast, not the Mr. Beast. <laughs> Okay, this match is just about to start. Uh, Lee Phillips, yeah, you got there in the end, mate. The punch is going to be a bit tricky. Um, we've got a question, when is Pomfinity versus TTD? So we are hopefully going to do that in the new year. We've been speaking to the guys at Pomfinity, fantastic guys over there, and we are hopeful that is going to be done in the new year. But watch the space to be confirmed. Rumour has it as well, Gaffer, that not only are we going to have the match, the official match against both, we might be doing a little bit of a challenge video, trying to plan something up. I mean, with those guys, you've got to try and get some challenges in, haven't you? So we'll see what the future holds. But here we go in the second match, Pocket Rocket against Hugo Torngren. Started off with a let, so it gives us a chance to start this match again. First backhand in there from Pocket. Hugo holds it well. And then Pocket just goes a bit too long there with his first forehand of the game. Serve straight into the net. I guess if you're going to do it, the time to do it is at level one down. Pocket is notorious for starting matches quite slow. Mm. He says that himself. So it's undoubtedly going to happen here against a strong opponent like Hugo. But hopefully he can get a point on the board in a moment. Interesting there that um, on Hugo's first serve at, at two love up, he actually chose to pivot and play two forehands. If I had the backhand punch that I saw him hitting then in the warm up, mm. I wouldn't be pivoting on anything. 
don't know, maybe he knows best. <laughs> <laughs> Commentator's curse. The crowd there trying to get some life into pocket. It's a bit nervous here, you can see. He's on two serves now. Mm. Just needs to shake those, shake those first match nerves off. As you can see there, he's just trying to be on his toes. You can see this uh, North Ayrshire opposition, very calm. Uh, although probably still, still a little bit nervous himself, missing a couple of backhands. But he is in a comfortable 5-2 lead in this first. Nice, fast, aggressive. Martin Jasper there saying, pocket can't start any slower than the founder and the frog in doubles. Please tell me, Gaffer, you are not going to subject us and all the viewers to another showing of the frog well, and founder. Part of the greatness of this division is that we could bring in a fourth player just for the doubles like we did against the previous match in Trump, Drum Chapel. Um, however, I don't think that will be happening this time around. Interesting thing. I saw Beast obviously in the building. And, uh, ooh, ooh, a little bit of a cheeky luck. You don't see that often. <laughs> It's on one side of the table and comes back. Yeah, I saw the beast earlier and he was amazed that Tom and Dan played so badly in the doubles. He said that they'd been playing midweek. Uh, the Founder and the Frog had beaten Beast and the Welsh Dragon in doubles. So they were really confident. And then the wheels fell off. That's the difference in training compared to competitive match play, isn't it? Yeah. You can look amazing in training, something that I can do quite often. But when it comes to matches, it all goes downhill. Pocket's starting to get more into this match now. As they go for the first tower down. Hugo leading 7-5. Yeah, you're allowed to tower down every six points for those of you new to table tennis. So you can go over, gather your thoughts. Did a good chance to uh, just halt the momentum. So Pocket's opting for this backhand serve after missing a couple of those forehands. Open rally here. The Cho and Sorry combination. <laughs> as long as you get both in, it's fine. <laughs> it's probably better to do it in that order as well, not say Sorry then Cho. Yeah. yeah. There's a big Cho there from Pocket. Starting to fire up the band. And I, I, I do think that that backhand serve against a good receiver allows Pocket, his feet are already stationed for a big backhand, as opposed to the pendulum where he's got to rotate round and then get into position. He's already there for it. Yeah, it's very true. It's a fast serve. <laughs> Bit of luck. Someone in the crowd cheering. Give, oh. Giving the big yes. <laughs> we don't condone that. <laughs> he's going to be forcibly removed from the building. It's a good flick. Been watching Martin there, took some inspiration, gets that flick on, goes into a 9 7 lead on his serve. Let's see then, Pocket going back to that backhand serve by the look of it. He's turned this one around, he was 5 2 down at one point. Chuck's in a float serve by the look of it. Love to see it. Getting support from the bench here. That's how you get the best out of pocket rocket. Yeah. You got to, it all comes from the bench. Back and serve again. Oh. Miss that one. That's free. Unforced serve. Unforced errors now on the serve from pocket. Showing, showing those nerves again. How tall is Hugo? He looks massive compared to the rocket. It's probably a bit of both. Hugo probably taller than average, and pocket definitely shorter than average. Agreed. Yeah. There. Crowd getting involved, putting a little bit of pressure on the North Ayrshire number one. Can he come back or is Pocket going to take this first set? Oh. <laughs> Banking on Pocket to get that forehand in. He gets the backhand in. Hugo holds it well. Again, I think Pocket difficult because he's won the majority of the latter points in this but could just start to vary the placement on his first backhand attack start to go oh. yeah. North Ayrshire team loving that one aggressive he's brought his back then we're at juice in the first set yeah I just think for pocket just a couple of times he's getting in good backhand opens but just starting to be a bit predictable of where he's sending them 
I got a little bit lucky there. I don't know if Hugo was uh, expecting maybe a flick, but Pockets got it deep into the table. And the North Ayrshire player just couldn't get round to the forehand and has put it in the net, given Pocket one more set point here. Can he do it third time lucky? Oh! It was exactly what I asked him to do, send him wide forehand. Hugo, though, very, very good. You could see the ball, the amount of side spin that was going on the ball and really kicking. I thought we were going to have a big forehand top to top rally there. Unfortunately, Pocket just couldn't get that ball back into play and we're back at juice. Again. Good tactics from Pocket. Short to the forehand, then long to the backhand. See what Hugo comes up with. Had a lot of joy with a long, fast serve. I wonder if he throws that in this time. I think if Pocket can get in here, he needs to make sure that he's opening up into the middle of the Swede. Yeah. Right there. There we go. Gets it done. There we go. Takes that. 13-11 in the first. Crowd goes wild. Pocket Rocket, one up. He got there then. He got there in the end. Slow start. Great to see. Yep. Yeah. Slow start. Three serve mistakes as well. Yeah. Um, trying to give it. Someone put in the comments Christmas present. Yep. Yeah, we're a week out. Yeah. There's three but, of them. But Pocket's given them already. Oh, blimey. Uh, he got the result there. Got the first set. Settled some nerves. I'm sure that the North Ayrshire number one player is going to come back strong in the second set. What do we got in the comments then? What is the lineup for today? You know what? Let me hit you with a graphic. That's your lineup. The Welsh Dragon, the Pocket Rocket, and Tom the Frog. Hugo Colin, who is a very, very good player, and Martin from North Ayrshire. Let's throw it back into the booth. The Rocket has launched. He has. Let's, uh, ooh. what do we got in there? Jack asking, any idea when we're playing Brighton? They've recently signed our very own uh, English, Tom Jarvis. That is going to be a massive match because Tom comes with a lot of firepower. Yeah, current English national champion. We play Brighton away, so it will be at their home venue. That will be available to watch on TTE.TV. And that is the Saturday, the 9th of March in the yes. new year. So a couple of months away yet, but that one is going to be a cracker, especially if they do put out their full, well full strength team. What else have we got? Bence is asking, do you guys not work? Can you see these bags under my eyes, Bence? And this grey bit in my beard, <laughs> that means I work full time and do this, but that's how much we love it. Adam Bobro, shout out, solid lineup. It is. We only bring out the best. Also, shout out, Adam. We love the work that you're doing in America with the MLTT. Just realised the match is going back on and it's a big point. It's a massive point. Pockets at the back. Big top oh, to top. It's huge. Crowd loving it. I mean, if anything's going to get the crowd going, it is a big pocket rocket backhand, forehand combination. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm so sorry we wasted half of it. You looking at us guys? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Big counter from Hugo there. You see takes the ball, has his, has, uh, has his bat up high, nice and high, so just a short stroke and just goes straight for it, puts all that pressure back onto Pocket. Yeah, he's got a very solid stance here, Hugo. Sets him up well for those kind of points. But Pocket, that's, that's the thing, he sets up, he's very well suited, Hugo, for, for middle play, but if you can just put it a little bit wider, like Pocket did there, a little bit wider into the backhand, and, uh, and he found some joy with that. Drifting a little bit too long there, a little bit too easy for Hugo to pick up. And we're tied early on in this second at 2-2. Yeah, and like I mentioned, the uh, pocket like in that backhand serve, it suits him well because his feet and body are in position, his shoulders in for the backhand. But that means if you can pressure the forehand off it, pocket's just a little bit, the right foot's a little bit further forward. See, it was difficult for him to get on that serve receive. Yeah, and actually after that big point, I don't think pocket's got much joy after that. There's the punch. Punch is a thing of beauty. Very Swede-like, very Trolls-like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's great. Great different sets of play um, in the continent, especially in you know, countries like Sweden and France. It's fantastic to see the variety of players that you get out there. Pocket was holding that forehand well, but then as soon as it switched into the middle, 
And North Ayrshire, number one, gets that point and again takes a 5-2 lead. Now, Pocket was in this position in that first set and came back and won this one. Is he going to do the same here? Hugo's got a very powerful forehand. He's starting to go out to the pocket's wide forehand as well. Especially in that early phase of the point. Third ball, send it wide forehand. It's giving him lots of joy. Hugo goes in for the long serve. Pocket reads it well. Gets that point. Drags it back mm. to 4-6 on his serve. Sticking with his backhand serve as well, I can see now. Let's see where Hugo goes with this. Does he go to the forehand? Oh, chucks it long. He pockets first placement of that, of that good backhand opener. Mm. It's just too easy at the moment for Hugo just to hold that first one and just to put it back into yeah. his elbow, which is catching pocket off guard. Yeah. Look at that surf received that Nice touch, wasn't it there? Don't know what pocket rocket would have done with that one. Again, long, simple serves. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think. I think the pocket needs to be careful. He's hitting that big first backhand well, but he's going straight back into Hugo's backhand. Hugo just arcing it straight back into the hip. Yeah. And that's causing the pocket to lean. It's a pro tactic, you know. Mm. You, you, you're, you're minimizing the angles. You're putting it into hard placements there. Oh, it's a great dribble. Great feeling from Hugo. Pocket needs to step up, I feel, here. Gets away with it. So in the crowd there, loving it. Arms are up. This is what we love to see down at TTD. Yeah! Touch play. Yeah. Big chose now from Pocket Rocket. And we're at This is where seven he's in his element, isn't it? If this was a video game, this is the Pocket Rocket's world. <laughs> Open world. That's a big spinny forehand there. That's it. Yeah, you can see Hugo trying to send it out to Pocket's forehand. Pocket wise to it, loads it up with spin. Again, he's done well here, Pocket, to come back from that deficit of 5-2. Now leading 8-7 in the second set, looking strong. Great serve. Clever variation, clever variation there. And that's why often people neglect that backhand serve, but it's so tough as an opponent to know until the ball has essentially left the bat, what kind of spin is on it? How hard you've hit it? Hugo pivoting. Big shot, yeah. Again. Bit of a loose receive there from Pocket. Mm. Hugo pounces on it with that spinny forehand of his and he brings a point back. Hugo pivoting again. So again on serve receive, if you're the Pocket, you know that Hugo's going to eat up anything that lands near that middle line of the table. He wants to take his forehand from there. So you have to go either side. You have to either go wide forehand and force Hugo to step across, or you have to go very wide backhand, tuck it, so that if he does pivot, he has to lean for it. He can't just launch off it. Obviously, much, much easier said than done because Hugo puts a lot of spin on those serves. Short float. Very good receive from Hugo. Pocket went, for that. Back. Pocket went for that guide there into the backhand corner. Just went long. And now Hugo's got his first set point of the match to take this second. Oh, it's big. Oh, just dribbles off the net. Gives Hugo, gives Hugo that set. It's a big, you can feel the audience deflated off a big point. Hugo doing very, very well there. Coming up trumps in the final part of that set. What did he win? He must have won four out of the last five points. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Pocket was up 9-7 there. But again, just, just couldn't see it over the line. There were a couple of points that were identical off of Hugo's serve. Yeah. Um, where Pocket just, just put a, a push in there. And Hugo's got his forehand in and he's got those two points. I think that's what changed towards the latter part of that set. was Hugo being a bit more aggressive and pivoting the big forehand in. Pocket, I think, like I said, needs to start going wide, mm -hmm. eliminate eliminate the pivot. So avoid anything on that middle line of the table unless you're there and you're being aggressive and trying to pin it. What have we got 
in the comments then. Diego saying we need some more pimples in here. Respectfully disagree, Diego. I'm only joking. Um, good morning, gentlemen. Oversleeping to miss a 1-0 TTD lead. You did. Callum, coming up big and strong, but you'll be able to check this on YouTube. Ben, post. come on, Ben. Set that alarm for next time. But what? you'll be able to catch it on the highlights, rewatch it on the stream. You'll be able to catch up again. Absolutely. A lot of talk about Pongfinity and TTD, yes. I think everyone's a bit interested into how that would go. The super it's, fight of the century, I would call that. It's been many years. You know, we've been getting so many requests over all the videos that we've posted over probably the last five years, I would say. So, yeah, it is something that we are working towards. Those guys are fantastic over there in Finland. Big fans of them ourselves. And, yes, we are hopeful to work with them in some point in the new year. Is the German in the crowd. You can see him there on the left in the white shirt. We're going to try and get him into the booth. Started off with an open point here. Hugo aggressive. Wins that point. Yeah, the difference between Hugo's forehand and Pockets is Pocket is taking his later after the peak of the bounce. So the ball bounces, it rises to its highest point and then starts to drop again. And that's where Pocket likes to take his forehand. He takes it after the peak of the bounce to really load up on the spin. Hugo taking it at the peak or earlier. And that means he's able to then put Pocket under a little bit more pressure and get through the ball. We go off to a strong start then, three points. Yeah, I feel feel like Pocket on his receive. Maybe just lost a little bit of confidence there, trying to push quite a lot of the balls here. Or even trying to open it up there and, he, and it's just missing. Hugo's going to a four, four love lead. It's a rare thing that we see from Pocket Rocket is a forehand mm. flick, strong forehand flick as well, but he was probably thinking, oh, I've missed a couple of returns here. I need to try something a bit different. Absolutely, yeah. And again, we mentioned it. Backhand flick has become the massive part of table tennis in modern times. I almost feel like we're going we're gonna to go back to where people start to try and target that short forehand. So it's really important to get your forehand flick back to being elite level. Yeah, absolutely. Pocket just showing a bit of frustration there hitting the table again something I'll have words with him about afterwards there we go gets that backhand in recovers quickly and gets the North Ayrshire player off the table to win that point again this is the third set in a row Joe that Hugo has led 5-2 we'll see which way it swings this time Another good backhand flick there, being more positive this time on those receives. I think that's got to be the way that he goes if he wants to win this match. Yeah, so yeah pocket shadow playing it. Saying to expect it. Take his forehand off it. It'd be interesting to see if Hugo varies the placement now and goes long backhand. I'm sure. Services. Proper good, touch play. Yeah, I think if if Pocket was a little bit more confident, if he hadn't missed so many unforced errors in this set already, then that second backhand is flying on. But where he's just uh, not quite reaching the heights that we know that he can, he's missed that backhand. And Hugo's gone into a 7-3 lead here, looking strong in this third. It's been oh, great really placement. Pleasant. Yeah. Short to backhand, and then as you said, target that crossover, target that elbow point. Big receive there from Pocket. Gets it now to 7 5, only a two point deficit. He is good at coming back. But I'd like to, I'd like that uh, if, if he didn't miss so many unforced errors, that would be good. But, you know, his, his style of play is always going to be open to a couple of errors here and there. But he's look, looking a bit more confident here now. Oh, we said it. Shadow play. Hugo's got the smile on his face. It was a little bit edgy. But the right idea from Pocket. We saw the last one that happened when he served short to forehand. Hugo popped it to forehand. And Umir, Pocket Rocket, took it with the backhand. 
trying to get hold of pocket here. He was in a <laughs> he was in a state of uh, elation there after he hit that forehand flick. We have no ball boys or ball girls here, so we need uh, the players to get the balls themselves. <laughs> in Hong Kong out there. Fantastic to have you with us. Big point here. So does Hugo go back out to the forehand? Does pocket serve long to the backhand? It's a great receive. Oh! Crowd goes wild. Love the passion from Beast there as well. He was the first one up there cheering on his teammate. So great serve from pocket, so long float. And Hugo just read it, dug under the ball and kept it short. It's brilliant. Got a Is time, out call? time out here by the North Ayrshire side. As once again, pocket has brought this match back. We're now at 7 all, one all in sets, 7 all in this crucial third set. I can't call it. It's I, think, I think it's on Hugo to do something different off serve receive. Um, I th again, when we saw Hugo take off in the set before was when he started to pivot and put that forehand through. If he can start to, I think off serve receive, if he goes into Pocket's backhand, Pocket will tee the hit because we know he's going to. If Hugo starts to pivot on that and try and take it away, then Pocket again has to adjust and start to play line. I, I, yeah. yeah, it comes out to tactics at this point, doesn't it? Because, you know, I, I feel like maybe Pocket is he's just edging it if he can get his shots in, but... If Hugo mixes up the tactics, he can change all of that as well. Let us know in the comments which way you think this match is going to swing. Is it going to be a pocket rocket win? TTD go 2 new up? Or is the Swedish number one uh, for North Ayrshire going to take this and get a match back for yes. the North Ayrshire team? Is the silent assassin part of the team? He is. He is. He actually played the away match at Fusion earlier on in the system. Uh, in the season and if you want to watch that TTE.TV is the only place to go and check out uh, that match they have all of TTD's away matches on theirs let's go then big points seven all is he going to mix up this serve now is he going to do something completely different oh. I tell you what I feel like Pocket thought that that backhand had won in yeah. that point and he wasn't expecting that that ball back from Hugo, a, but he got it he dug in there. It was a great shot. The only criticism, as you mentioned earlier, was it went straight into Hugo's mm -hmm. backhand. He aims that s ever so slightly to the left. Yeah. Got the punch in. Yeah. Got a bit of luck. Right, they will come back at some point. Yeah. I thought that punch was going to be more difficult for Pocket to deal with, but he dealt with it really well. And it's now eight all. You go test in the net. It's the pivot, that's what I said. More often than not, Pocket likes to go cross court on his backhand. And whilst it's a very good shot, it sometimes is predictable. Yeah, yeah. Like I was saying, it comes down to tactics at this point in the game. If Pocket keeps on playing into that backhand side, that was going to read it. That was a big short serve there. Heavy backspin Whoa. from Pocket. Hugo tries to give it a dig, and he digs it in the net. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great serve. Again, variation. So the serve before that was short with no spin, float, and this next one, Umir just going under the ball and ripping it in half. Putting as much backspin as he possibly could on it. And <laughs> Seemed like a bit of a miss hit there from Hugo on that forehand. I thought Pocket was uh, was looking strong. He might take that one, but mm. Hugo moved him well there onto the wide forehand. And now this North Ayrshire number one player has a set point to take this third game. Unlucky, the right idea. Hugo then takes it 2 1. Pocket with the work to do to come back. I feel like tactically that was 
the right thing to do at that point in the game. Yeah, yeah. Pocket trying to find the line, trying to go into a lot of his troubles. It's like I say, Hugo is pivoting, so he's playing his forehand from his backhand side. And especially in that big point at 9 all, Hugo then pivoted. He was standing on the left hand side of the table and hooks it up the line. Yeah. Yep. Pocket has to shut that off and start going deep into Hugo's forehand. It's difficult because Hugo, is, there was a comment that says he's got a very good forehand. Yeah. You need to make him change before he changes you, I think, is the impetus. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's going to be a tough one now. I think Pocket has got it in his game to take this to a fifth and final set, but Hugo now maybe got a bit more confidence. He's starting to get his shots in play. I think it's going to be another tight set, as yeah. the previous three have shown. It's interesting. We got some love for the ringer. I missed the ringer. He inspired me to the reverse pendulum serve. That serve is absolutely brutal to try and play against. It's so loaded. That long, in, especially into the middle as well. It's, it's such a difficult, difficult serve to receive. Yeah, ringer has, um, he's moved back to Poland. Um, he's a family man now. So he's got a, he's got a little baby. So again, he's taking um, a little time out from, from TT. Um, but hopefully we will see him back in some capacity. Yes. Guys, are you sponsored by Prime? Unintentional leak. Yes. We've got the bottles in. I wish we were sponsored. Uh, unfortunately not. If KSI or Logan Paul are watching this and, you know, want to wanna hit us up, then feel free. Our DMs are open. Big spin. Heavy spin. Lee's asking, what was the score in the first match? Uh, so Callum... One against Martin Johnson, 3-1. It was a big, big match. It was a massive serve. Chucks in the fast, long, horrible dig serve there. Yes. And has gone 2 new up in this fourth. Again, try to go line. I like the idea of it. I feel like a timeout is going to be mm. called very soon if a pocket but does miss it. this next point. Hugo was 5-2 up in that last, well, in all three sets so far. And they keep coming back. Yeah, Pocket is... I feel like there's a bit of a difference in Pocket now. Mm. And as I just mentioned there, I could feel the timeout come in. I know Pocket very well. And there it is, timeout for yeah. TTD. Who does the team talk? It looks like the founder. Yeah, I think founder at this point. Again, him, it's been covered a couple of times now across the videos. Him, uh, founder and Pocket have known each other for many, many years. They grew up together playing. They uh, share the same kind of psychological battles um, so I think Fowler is is the right person to give him some tactics here yeah. where are the choppers at Gaffer have we got an opportunity to bring a chopper there are some very very good choppers in the UK actually um, yeah I think uh, off the top of my head one of the only choppers in the in the division plays for Brighton mm -hmm. um, I think that's one of the only ones yeah the chopping is a fantastic match to watch it's a, like, a on yeah, like we're saying, it's great variety, especially a chopper, a hybrid player, you know, who can come in with the big top spins as well. I love that type of game personally. Maybe we, uh, maybe we need to take a trip to Greece, see, uh, <laughs> see what Giotis is doing. <laughs> yeah, time's been called. We're going back on. See what the pocket can do. I think if he wins this point, he has to show the house down. He has to scream. He has to get some blood back into his yeah. system. Get the crowd going again. Put his towel in the wrong basket there. So you can see that his focus is completely on the game and nothing else. So spinny from Hugo. Yeah, it looked like there for just a moment, Pocket was keeping that ball on, containing well. But no, Hugo, I think he's feeling confident here. Five new up in this fourth. Chucks in another long serve. Oh. Picking the angles. Yeah. I think this is a very tough ask now from Pocket. But like we said, he's come back from these deficits before. Six love down on his serve. You can see how much that ball kicked to the right though. Yeah. He was loaded with spin that. Good spin. Yeah, I think the North Ayrshire playing there, just staying very solid, pushing Pocket back, making him put that error in play. Oh. 
Yeah, okay. Hugo's very in the placement very, very well now. And he's completely relaxed. Yeah. Eat them up. What are we gonna see? <laughs> a donut, a granny, whatever you want to call it. Oh. He's only two points away now. Let's hope for pocket sake that's not gonna happen. I'm wondering if we uh Are we going to see an exhibition point to finish it off? Yeah, maybe. Are we going to see some sportsmanship from Hugo? Personally, I hope not. I think he might have done He might have done he... that. <laughs> he might have done that. Pocket should be giving this point back now, really. But Pocket doesn't work like that. He's going to go for a big backhand. Oh, oh maybe he does. Hugo, class. Too good. Proves too good for the Pocket. Takes it 3-1. You think of those sets, how incredibly close they were. Yeah, Hugo, all class. Great player to watch. Looking forward to seeing this final match. So that levels the match. 1-1 now, North Ershire on the board. Onto the doubles. Yes. Who, have the you got any, got any hints as to who the doubles pairing is going to be? Well, as we said earlier, it's definitely not the founder. Um, <laughs> That was a little bit calamitous there between Founder and Frog in the previous matchup. Um, so we're going to go back to our previous doubles of Welsh Dragon and giving Tom the Frog the opportunity of getting on the table before his first single match. So that is the pairing for TTD. Yeah, that was that was probably the only bright spark from the disastrous doubles last time was that we got Founder onto the table and at least got those nerves out. So that by the time he had to play Victor Guanxi, who is a ridiculously good player, all of a sudden, and as you saw, if you saw in the video, he's playing like Timo Boll. What have we got in the comments then? Choppers with long pips, they are the worst thing imaginable to try and play against. You guys are fantastic at commentating. Thank you very much, Actual Glazier. We appreciate it. Robin, will this be a bagel? Well, it, it probably would have been. I think it would have been. Yeah, <laughs> very gracious competitor yes. there, Hugo, giving Pocket the point. Yeah. Dunk saying the new guy is nervous as the umpire. That might be a little bit critical and harsh. <laughs> oh, I thought he did a good job. <laughs> yeah, we've got a new umpire in play here. He is um, he's a local guy, very, very good guy, Dave. Um, yeah, he's not used to this kind of an atmosphere, to be honest. It's, uh, it's, it's when you're down there, there is so much going on. It sometimes doesn't always come across from the stream, mm. um, but there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot going on. But it, I think I think he's doing a great job. It also doesn't help when you've got the Germans stood there banging the drum. That's going to put the pressure onto anyone. Imagine trying to do your job if you're a plumber. You're trying to fix a pipe, and you just got the German there banging the drum behind it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But but guys, it's been fantastic being here in the booth with you all. Um, you may see me again later, Ooh. but I'm going to hand over now uh, to Beast. So we're going to get the beast in the commentary booth. Right. Joe, it's been a pleasure. I'll catch you soon. Yes, Gaffer. Let's load this up then. So we know doubles is next. Team TTD. So you heard it from the Gaffer. The Welsh Dragon, Callum and the Frog coming up against the duo from North Ayrshire. Guys, we're coming back to the booth. He is here from Germany. The Beast. All right, guys. How are we doing? I'm doing good. I'm enjoying this match. Yeah. That last one was a special. That was a big really point, huh? So, yeah, well, I mean, obviously, Callum coming up first against Martin. Uh, I mean, we were loving watching Martin playing uh, in the booth, just hitting all yeah. our rockets off everything. Uh, and Callum getting us off to a great start, 3-1. Yeah. And then that last one, that was... It, every set went off, 5-2 lead. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to North Ayrshire and then Pocket would just start to creep back yeah. and you'd get back to those kind of seven alls. You, you could feel the energy in the hall yeah. that it was really like a, uh, a really big match. Yeah. And tactically, Uma, just in the end, maybe he lost concentration on the tactics. Yeah, yeah, bit. yeah. But it was such a tactical game, by the a brilliant game from. Uh, uh, so North Ayrshire, I've just noticed they've got the Scottish duo. So Colin Dalgleish and Martin Johnson yeah. going to be a very, very tough duo to play against here. What we got going on in the chat? Tim has asked, what's the Beast's equipment? What do you play with uh, nowadays? I'm using the T-Mobile ALC. It's a really good one. 
Dignix 09C on the forehand and Dignix 05 on the backhand. Mm. I'm loving it. Yeah. It's a great combo. It's an aggressive combo, that. Beast, why are you not playing? You you, you tell the group, why are you right. not playing? So I'm currently playing in the German league and you can't cross, cross, uh, cross the two leagues, unfortunately. What division do you play in Germany? We had a uh, few questions. Uh, fourth league. Fourth yes. league. And, and our goal is to go up into the third league and we're top you, of the table at the moment. Top? So. Oh, nice. Yeah, good. Nice. Yes. Uh, and what's the team that you play for? What are they, I can never pronounce the name. Asphalt Grünvetterspach. Look at the yeah. beast. He's been doing German lessons. Is the beast sponsored by Butterfly? Yeah, I'm sponsored yeah, by Butterfly. Yeah. Well, can can yeah. you give me some free kit? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe one. <laughs> not, not live on the stream, obviously. <laughs> I am confident TTD will win this doubles. Fingers crossed. It can't be any worse than the disastrous doubles. Did you get to see that? The founder and the frog. I saw it. <laughs> the founder's just walked in. Right, what's the room? commentator saying? That was it's hard, guys. It's hard out there, boys. You're in the atmosphere right now. Yeah. It's fantastic. This is great. How are we feeling down there? Yeah, it's good. The energy's good. The shame of Pocket. Pocket was playing so well, but you know the downwards is very consistent. And big, big double. We got a, we got a comment here. It's an interesting one. With the January transfer window opening, are there any new guys going in or going out? Of, of the team, yeah. Yeah. We, we are, yeah. We are, uh, the chairman. <laughs> the chairman's place. The chairman sat there as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is fantastic. Is the German league this great? Fourth league better than the Prem in England? There's no one better to kind of comment on that. Uh, I would say. Overall, probably in, in standard across I'd all the players. I'd say it's quite similar. Yeah. Maybe. Because in England, there's quite a few foreigners that are playing especially this year the, the levels definitely upped yeah. so yeah, yeah. I'd say it's very similar yeah we've got another would love to see some recordings from your matches in Germany are they streamed anywhere where can we see that yeah I've got a few recordings uh, I was speaking to Dan I might send him a few matches and okay. can put it on the second cool. channel or, yeah. yes is there going to be another open tournament please ask Dan he's just left the building but uh not necessarily an open, but there was a TTD team knockout tournament that we filmed last week uh, that's going to be coming out in the next few weeks. We're aiming to get it pre-Christmas. It might be pre-New Year, a little treat for you. Um, but yes, that's coming. What's the best table tennis league in general after China? What do you think, these? Japan? I, I don't know. Outside in Europe, it's definitely France and Germany are the, yes. are the two strongest ones. Yeah, definitely. You've seen the man who's just. Do you do you want to swap? I tell you what, chair. You, chair, chair, go and get a chair. Do you want to do that? We'll squidge on in. You can hear. This will be <laughs> the teams. Are any of you guys going to WTT Manchester? Yeah, I'll be playing Manchester. Have we just said some breaking news there? Uh, maybe I have spoiled it. <laughs> so, you will be able to stream and watch the Beast play WTT in Manchester. Yeah. And rest assured, we are all going to be there in his corner. <laughs> We're going to get the German with the drum. <laughs> Is there banging the drum? We'll get that in there as well. That's brilliant. Beast, what did you think of Timothy's TT. debut the other day? I saw a point uh, where he, he played. He, yeah, a yesterday. massive point. Yeah, he's, he's great. my roommate in Germany, and I'm very proud of him yesterday. He played really well against Steger. That's fantastic. He's, one all and flying, yeah. unfortunately, but yeah, really good match. Yeah, it's, uh, what, what do you think about it, potentially, if the, uh, if the rules loosen between the German and the English league? Yeah. What about Timothy coming over and uh, possibly joining the team? I don't know. We're going to have to see. To negotiate. We're going to have to see. All right, we have the chairman in the building. Hi, guys. Light up the comments. What do we want to ask the chairman? How, how are you feeling? The atmosphere is great down there, oh, huh? Yeah, it's buzzing. They're, 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 they said they want it like Millwall's football brand. Like Millwall, <laughs> yeah. Stand the den. <laughs> so the uh, chairman just said we want to make it like Millwall, which is this really hostile football club in the UK. <laughs> lots of noise, <laughs> lots of aggression. Make the uh, opponents really feel nervous when you play, and they're definitely doing that. The GOAT has arrived, <laughs> the chairman. I appreciate it. <laughs> What are we feeling about this doubles then? So we've got a good pairing that's out. Yeah. Callum and Tom. Yeah. Uh, they can't do no words, can they, than last time. Tom and the other fan. Do you think they'll use that as motivation? Yeah. I think yeah. Tom definitely will. I think he'll have a uh, score to settle. Yeah, I don't think they need a lot of motivation. Strong pairings. 
yeah, they're up against a strong pair and in Martin and Colin, both players that we've got to have a good look at up close with the uh, TTVSL. Someone said they're coming back and seeing the chair and the beast. Their happiness has hit me. <laughs> Chairman, what equipment do you use apart from the bicycle tube? <laughs> um, all drink, all blade. Uh, energy 05 on the forehand. Yes. And the 25 on the backhand for me clumping. For your clumping, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a final comment that says, does the chairman still do Bristol League matches? And if so, how well are you doing? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, about 70% in the Bristol. So uh, not too, it's quite a strong league. Yeah. yeah. Who, who's in the rest of the team? Uh, yeah. You. <laughs> uh, the, we bring the fan to him when we're struggling yeah. against the big teams. Uh, the gaffer, uh, the junior editor, yes. Tom Lewis. And who else we got? Uh, that's it, isn't it? I think that's it. The tech guy sometimes plays, oh, the tech doesn't he? Guy, yeah, when he ain't swanning about in uh, Tenerife <laughs> getting coaching lessons. <laughs> and we got Jarek in the chat saying, best regards for the chairman. He's still crying after losing to you last Sunday. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> we were all following in the WhatsApp chat as chairman was updating us and yeah, it was going wild. It was great. All right, it looks like we must be getting close to this doubles kicking off. Tom just getting his final warm-ups in. Joe, you should be playing today, says the Dane. I don't think I should. Oh. Maybe the only place I'm fit for on that court is in the umpire chair. <laughs> Joe, the fan that wants me downstairs. You're, you're going. With the drum. Okay, chairman's on the drum. <laughs> we are going to stay on the camera watching you on the drum, no, all right? I'm on the drum. I'm just <laughs> cheering with the drum. All right. See Lovely you later, guys. Thank you, chairman. Tom then getting his final warm-ups in with Colin. TTD, that is something I have to say, serving us off. Good oh, flip from Martin. These camera angles are going to be difficult with all our uh, righty players. I'm going to try and do my best so you can see the ball. Any update on Pongfinity, Joe? My lips are sealed. Just know that we are in talks. Uh, there is something that's going to be happening within the next, I would say, four months. It's to be very, very exciting. I believe uh, Pongfinity are up for doing a match and then also up for doing a challenge video as well, which will be great. Callum in there, nice and aggressive. The chairman's made his way down, you can see. Very good flick. Talk to me, Beast, a little bit about tactics for doubles. What are you trying to do as a, yeah. as a generic tactic? Is there something that, is it that you're trying to pin them onto backhands? I'd say in doubles, it's, it's seven receivers definitely the most important. You're trying that your serves are not drifting long. Mm -hmm. Try, you're trying to get them first. It's very, it's a very tactical mm -hmm. game. It's doubles, like. Uh, it, also, it depends if you're two righties, if you're a lefty. As a lefty and a righty, I try to play. I try to play a lot of like down the line. Yeah. So because it's very effective, a lot of lines. So. It's interesting for North Ayrshire here. So Martin obviously absolutely hits the ball with such power. Colin. I would say he's a little bit more creative. Ooh. Likes to mix up the play a lot more. More than happy to play a slow forehand if it's what he feels is the right thing to do. Makes him a very difficult combination to play against.
lucky from Callum there. It's good that he's trying to get in on the half longs. Doing very well. Look at the edge. East, how did you find your sponsor? Um, to be honest, uh, the founder <laughs> uh, sorted that out mostly. And I think just, I don't know, playing a lot of tournaments, exposure. It's good from Tommy Callum there. The Scottish boys obviously trying to pin them in the backhand. Move their feet well. We have to stop giving away points in the doubles. I could not agree more. It's true. The gaffer knows it. We've been a bit sloppy here. Too many easy balls for you. It's a lovely combo there, though. Tom with the heavy spin. Callum then with a the much more powerful shot, the kill shot. Starting to go into the backhand serve. Oh, great receiver there, though, Tom. Nice and short. Put all of Martin's spin back on the ball. Eight all. See, Callum's just put the hand signal down, or he's made a fist, which means he wants a float, so no spin. Exactly the same as we said for Tom, just keeping the ball nice and touch tight, short so that Callum really can't come in and attack it in any way. Two set points then for the North Ayrshire team. Two points for TTV to save this set. Lucky by Tom. Oh, fair share. Take what feels like it's going to be a pretty critical match. You take the first set in it. How much are you thinking about in doubles as well, about your opponent's strengths individually? So if someone's got a really big forehand, are you, are you trying to keep them pinned in the backhand so that they can't use it? Yeah, it depends on the player, and also it depends on your on your uh, partner as well. Because yeah. depends if if it's to normally to junior players you might take the ball a bit early and try and uh, take the timing or if I'm playing with a player that stands back a bit like a pocket rocket who, yeah. who likes a lot of time I'll try to adjust to his game it yeah. really depends on who I'm playing with him. yes interesting boring question but how do teams fund travel North Ayrshire to Bristol is a big journey it is um, it's individual to each club, to be honest. Um, and obviously clubs will receive income from people signing up for the year for, for training, um, but also sponsorships. Um, a lot of good sponsorships in Scotland as well, in particular for North Ayrshire and Drumchapel. Um, it, yeah. Pair chairman with the Pocket Rocket for next doubles. What do you think? He's uh, <laughs> not sure. I'm not too sure. But... <laughs> yes, we need to bring the... German back for the doubles. Yes, we do. Go down there. on there, got the footwork out to the wide backhand to play his forehand. Callum's forehand's massive, isn't it? Yeah, it's world class. <laughs> <laughs> Martin nearly there with the early Joe. Yeah, anything that's even half long, Martin just eats up. Yeah, they're on fire. I know these two play doubles together a lot at their front, so they definitely used to amazing footwork. Straight up the line into the forehand. What do we think then, guys? Are TTD going to be able to pull this one back? Yeah. 
Can we get this more joy again? Go live forehand on Martin. incredibly hard at him and he just soft hands put it back onto the table so another one out to wide forehand the frog as well showing he's feeling it and doubles that that third ball is so important yeah. serve then serve receive and it's how much pressure you can then put on your third ball yeah. got a good sense of how far back Tom went off the court there again going back and serve Callum. Three point advantage now then. I'm going back to the forehand. I missed the hand signal though, so I couldn't see. Tom's flying. The hand signals then for, for doubles. Why do you do that? What what are you trying to tell your partner? Uh, just letting my partner know what spin it is, what he can expect. For example, if I serve a topspin serve, you should keep his racket high and expect just to give a bit of help to my partner. Yeah, yeah it's really mean? helpful because then there's a lot of uh, floaters are very common, so no spin is very common in doubles. Hoping that the other person either uh, does a weak flick or, or pushes and you can get in directly. Yeah, it's getting in is essential in doubles. Are the hand signals are they are they unique to each? To each yeah. partner, or if you were going to play doubles with Marlon, would he understand if you gave him the thumbs up signal that you're going to do a top spin serve deal? I think he'd probably understand that you'd. <laughs> I think it'd be a good idea to um, to speak about it beforehand. To be fair, I think if you were playing doubles with Marlon, it wouldn't matter what set you're going to do. He's going to rip that next one. Very good from Callum. See what I mean though about Tom's got a good serve receiver. If Martin's ball, if that if that third shot of the rally is a weak one. That fourth player can then get in really strong. Let's flip the net. Oh, lucky from the frog. You see what he's trying to do? They sent Martin out to wide forehand and then stepped in and was trying to send him to wide backhand. Beast, what's your training schedule like in Germany? How many, how many times a week are you playing? Uh, um, every day, except for on Sundays, I don't play. Okay. Uh, Mondays, I play five hours, every day, five hours. On Saturday, one time, two, two and a half hours. And uh, Sunday's a chill day. Okay. Or normally on the weekends, I might have league matches, or it depends. Or if I have league matches, I might. Right. Oh. Yeah. I think I think there was. Uh, I think Colin thought it was a let, said sorry to stop the play, but nobody else thought it was. But the boys in Sporting agreed to play the let. Here you go, TTD, leveling up, one-one. That felt like where that changed was the frog starting to send Martin out to wide forehand. I wonder if he's going to tell Callum about that and you'll see Callum trying to send Martin wide forehand as well. Yeah. So back to your training schedule. Is there is there set things that you will... Is like Monday morning serve practice? Is Monday morning a review of the last match you played so that you can tactically look at weaknesses? How in-depth is it? Or do you just turn up to the hall and the coach goes, you know what, you're going to do Falkenberg and then for the next hour you're going to do 2-2? Nowadays, it's 
quite individual to the person. Yeah. I'd say Monday to Wednesday is more footwork kind of, and then as you get to Thursday, Friday, when we've all got matches, is more yeah. matches, a lot of serve receive. Yes. It really uh, alters depending on when we have matches. Every player also plays for different teams, different matches. Yeah. So it depends on, you try to go around your schedule. Everyone's a bit individual. Do you, do you have, do you try to mimic styles of upcoming opponents in, in, I think about kind of boxing or MMA or football, even in drills, right? You're trying to mimic on that day before the match, what you think your opponent's going to do. Is there ever, if, if someone has to play a lefty, do they come and play with you yeah, to just definitely. get those angles? Yeah. Just, yeah. I wouldn't say you mimic in the sense um, you try to do exactly like, yeah. but maybe if a person serves a hook serve or yeah. more reverse, I might play against someone like that. If if I'm playing a lefty, I might try try and play a few uh, matches against lefties. Fr uh, Friday afternoon, we normally always play matches. Yeah, yeah. So, because we have matches, matches on the Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. I like that. Only matches on Saturdays. Yeah, only matches. Really good idea. Do you want to know the prep that me and Chairman do before a match? What do you do? <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> we serve and try and clump it. <laughs> Either of us ever copy what professional players do with their serves and then they say, that. Oh, snake one. Oh, unlucky from the frog. <laughs> Colin and Martin talking tactics, talking placement. Yeah, do you ever get to mimic? Do you ever see something and go, oh, I really like the look of that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and copy it. Yeah, there's a lot. I think everyone does a bit. For example, and it goes through crazes. It's like, for example, when Anders Lind like just like came back, I was trying to like, strawberry all the time, and I know a lot of players are doing stuff like that, or just trying to, I don't know, just trying to see what works for your game. Watch the edge. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, I I like to look at it. Um, Often patterns, so what's the serve and then what's the kill shot after it? So, like we saw Pocket starting to do a short float serve into forehand, that more often than not will pop if you've been able to hide it well enough. Short to forehand, you come in and flip kill. Or, like the Dane likes to do, right? This high top pendulum serve. Uh, the Dane will throw the ball up massively up the end, he's going to rip it with side spin and top spin into yeah. your wide backhand. Yeah. And he, he immediately just steps left so yeah, he can just crush exactly. that next ball. Um, yeah. It's always good to take inspiration. Yeah. I think every player has a few like routines or a few a few uh, yeah, things that work for their, for their game. For example, I like serving long in the back end. Mm -hmm. Heavy backspin, they normally give a weak ball and I wait in, in my forehand because of the side spin. Or, I don't know, when I serve float, I always try and play into the middle for yeah. the next ball. Every player has a few routines. Of their own. Frog hit that ball that hard that he broke it. A new ball on the court. Oh. <laughs> I think he slightly mishit that serve. Martin was not in the mood. Give any refunds. <laughs> yeah, just took the case off the ball. Just spinning it in cross court. Is a robot worth buying? What do you think? I would definitely say if you have a club, then it's better to just go play with real players, but. Uh, I haven't had too much experience with robots, but I think some of the new ones are pretty good. What do you think? 
Uh, I agree with you. I think they have their uses. When you've got no one else to play with and at home, they're definitely better than nothing. Um, I think for beginners, for forming technique, if you just want to go over 50 forehands, 50 backhands, they can be good. But I think where they can limit you is you don't then build your understanding of how when uh, Tom impacts this serve, what to kind of listen out for, the, the sound of content, uh, content, for instance. If it's really fine, you know that that serve is absolutely butchered with spin. There's quite a flat or a conk sound to it. You know that there's no spin and you miss that, that, that knowledge building, that cue reading from having a robot. A tight match. from Tom. Good serve receive as well from Callum. You can hear Colin saying there, good spin, and it was absolutely loaded. Again, more often than not, in doubles, I think there's a lot to be said about a slower, spinnier ball because you're constantly moving. If Callum hits this ball, he now has to move out the way for the frog. The frog then has to move out the way. Callum hits it and then you have to come back in. And that spin can be incredibly difficult to deal with. Oh, slow spin. There it was. The Scots, North Ayrshire, take the third set. They are now 2-1 up in the doubles. All on Callum and Tom to then pull this back, try and get it to a fifth set. He looked the founder and chairman. I don't know whether the chairman's just stood up to just stretch his legs. Yeah, I don't think he, he uh, has too many ideas about <laughs> what, to say, what to say here, but I think he should leave that to his son. <laughs> Are we saying we're not going to fly uh, the chairman out anytime soon to Germany during one of your league matches to give you tactics? Uh, to give tactics? I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe to... <laughs> Guys, what do we think? Are TKD going to be able to pull this back and drag it into a fifth set? Or are the Scots just a little bit too aggressive, a little bit too clean on the ball? I think this is going to be interesting because we're going back to now Tom playing to Martin. Yeah. So again, we'll see how early he tries to get him moving side to side. Is Dan a better player or a better coach? That is an interesting question, actually. What do you think? Um, he's coached me pretty much all of my yeah. career since eight years old. So I'd, I'd, I'd definitely say a he's, better coach. Well, yeah, he is I, improving I, a lot. I would say, say he's a phenomenal coach. Yeah, yeah, I think he is definitely one of the, one of the best in in the UK for that sure. sure. Um, but that's not a slight on him as a player. He's still no. a very, very good player. Yeah, the shame for him is he often, he's worrying about when he, for instance, last time when he comes to play the doubles, he's going around checking, there's all memory yeah. cards in the cameras, he's checking the live stream. Yeah. And you think when you turn up to a match, you just want to think about the match, yeah. which I think often, yeah, messes Dan up. All right, fourth set, Let's see if we can take it. Start and with the serve, just flicks the net. Looked like it was uh, pretty long. The frog on the fish. 
Tommy Callum then being pinned back to the backhands. Tom just able to grease the ball in. When he does that, when he gets caught out of space, he spins it a lot to try and make it difficult to cross him. Tadina then take three out of the first four points. Big backhand. And yeah, the crowd starting to try and get going. Obviously wanting Martin to go to forehand to forehand. This is what I mean. If you can if, if you can hit the third shot of the yeah. rally really clean, really well, more often than not, you're gonna put yourself yeah. in a fantastic position to win. It's all about helping your, your partner as well. Like just trying to make his ball easy. Oh. It's a great shot. I definitely feel the energy now of the TTD boys. They're a lot more pumped up now after losing, like that last set just falling away from them. I feel, I feel a change in the energy. Yeah. shot from Tom. Red, the half long, heavy back serve. Span it as heavy as he could into Martin. Martin improv very, very well. Chop block down on it. Callum was there though to take the forehand. <laughs> See, that's the difficulty. If you serve anything remotely drifty, especially to Martin, he's going to get a big, aggressive shot on it. Tom shortening it up. I think if you are in doubles, if you're wanting to serve, if it's coming long, it's better just to give a long fast one and the other person waits for it. Yeah. Then this half long is not going well for the boys. there. 7-7. Seven, seven. The B7, a slight chuckle. The latest <laughs> comment that says, what's the highest ranking the chairman has achieved? <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. I know in the veterans he was at quite high at one point. It's a great flip from Colin. Really aggressive. Timeout called by the TTD boys. We are back in the booth. The boys coming back from the timeout. Feels like a massive point on serve. And the serve last time, Colin was very, very aggressive with that backhand flip. The crowd trying to get him going. The energy is amazing. Especially when you feel it on the bench when you're playing, I can imagine it would be. Umer was so pumped up. 
Dan has improved so much recently. What do we think the reason for his improvement is? Well, I think he uh, made a commitment post-COVID, coming out of COVID, to improve his backhand a lot. And I think that's left him out a lot. Obviously, it helps being here 24-7. Big point here. And that backhand flip from Colin, this time sending it up the line into the Frogs' backhand. Frog able to block it in, but then Martin there waiting. Look at that, buddy. Look at the ball saying sorry. This is a Tom, big point now. Tom did well there. Just touched this ball nice and short into the middle of the table. Didn't give Martin anything to go with. Again, I wonder if he goes long, heavy, as hard as he can, long on the table into the wide forehand. Oh. Oh. It's a trap. Colin, very cleverly sending. Side spin serve out wide to Tom. Tom Eva then has to go round the net into Martin's backhand or play a safer option back onto the table. Martin just waiting there. Hits the big counter. Two big serves in. I believe Tom's just said to do float. Bit of a lucky point there. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a lucky one, right? That's what happens in these in these close moments. A lot of a lot of mistakes do happen. Hand signal going to be float, float again. See if Callum comes in with a third ball flick here. Ah, just kicks it long. And the boys take it. North Ayrshire win the doubles 3 1. Puts them 2 1 up into the next match. Very, very close. Up next, then, East. Up next, we have Tom the Frog versus Colin Dalgleish. Big match, they've played a few times together. Yeah. TTD obviously desperate to get that win. Colin there will be slightly, he'll, he'll be confident in the yeah. matchup, right? He'll, especially them taking the lead now. Yeah. It's a very, I know that in TTD SL, if I'm not wrong, Colin did take out the frog. Yes, I thought I he think, did. And maybe they've played two times and I know yeah. uh, Tom's been telling me he'd love to get his revenge. He really wants some revenge. It's going to be close. It's going to be a very fiery really match. All right, stay with us, guys. That is coming up very, very shortly. Yes, guys. So we just want to take a quick break from this stream to shout out to our partners, BetterPlay.ai. Now, BetterPlay is an awesome website which highlights your full match down to just the points played. We're going to be using the software to edit this stream and release it as a highlight form, so stay tuned for that. So, guys, if you want to improve your table tennis today, head over to BetterPlay.ai or click the links in the description for more. Here we are. Beast. That's why you're called the Beast. He's always snacking whenever he's got an opportunity. He's always filling his face. Chairman is currently ranked 99 in the veterans, Daniel. Is that correct? It seems a little... <laughs> it seems a little work. As in, as in, that seems bad. I would have thought he'd be closer to number one, is what I'm trying to say. Top 100 easy, yes. Yeah. What else have we got going on in this chat? Nothing much, right? So, in order for TTD to come back through, we know that Tom needs to get this victory up at match four. Then at match five, the Battle of the Ones. So that is Callum, Welsh Dragon Evans versus Hugo, the very, very talented Swede. That's going to be a big match. It's going to be very That's interesting. It's going to be very... I know uh, Callum was practicing in Eslov before. Okay. And they used to play together a lot. Ah, uh, so they might know each other's game very other's well. Game. That feels like it would be the battle of the big forehands, yeah. Go, 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 TTD. Why is the Beast not playing? He plays in Germany, so he can't play in both leagues, unfortunately. The exact same for the Dane. Um, yeah. We need to do a little bit of recruitment, I, I, I think, over in uh, Sweden. Obviously, Brighton making yeah. some big moves, bringing in Tom, Jarvis. Yeah. Brighton are really up to their team. That's huge, yeah. yeah. There's also a big match going on today, Ormsby against uh, Brighton. Ooh. That's going to be a very spicy match. Is Tom playing in there? Tom is playing. 
Wow. So Ormsby, they also have Macbeth, right? They have Macbeth and a Spanish player. Very good Spanish player. <laughs> <laughs> you, you left that nice and generic, yeah. a Spanish player. Yeah. yeah. There you go. How do we get into an international league? You know that? Um, I think in your own country, you have to make make a stance, do have some good results. Mm. You have to. Know. You have to. I'd say first you gotta probably in your own country prove yourself, and then before you can can go to the other. League. How good is the Swedish league in comparison to the UK league? Um. I, I've never played in Sweden, so I don't know exactly the level, but I know it's it's strong. Yeah, the first league. Definitely. There's some there's some good players in that top league, right? Yeah. There's a few that might make it into the TTD team. What's Callum's equipment? I actually don't know that off the top of my head. We'll uh, see if we can get Gaffer to go and check in with him, and then he can come back. And I actually you know, know his equipment. You do. I just had I just had a look at it. There you go. What, uh, what's he's he using with? the uh, Viscaria Super ZLC blade. On the forehand, Dignix 09C and uh, Dignix 05 on the back end. Interesting. There's quite a lot of people at the moment changing to 09C on the forehand, right? Yeah. Over Tenergy 05. Yeah. It's what, just, uh, what in this new that? generation with the new ball, I think having a sticky rubber is mm -hmm. essential, especially in the higher level. Have something like def a harder rubbers yeah. is the new... Uh, is a new thing. Interesting. And and talk to me a little bit about how, the difference between a hard rubber and a soft rubber. What? How do you need to change your swing to get the ball on the table? How does it change? A soft rubber definitely gives you more more security on the ball. Okay. It's definitely like it's so on open ups or something. You're probably you're less likely to miss. So does that mean there's more of an arc on the ball? A, a higher yes. arc, so it's. Yeah. It, it, it's more likely to go over the net, yes. but then it's also more likely to yeah. dip back down onto the table. Whereas the these harder rubbers, is, the quality is much better. Oh, wow. Rubbers. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. And it's faster. It's just yeah. Especially with this new ball, with the old ball. Mm. Yeah. Daniel has checked. The chairman is at number nine. That feels like we need to do a YouTube series on its own of getting chairman to the top ten in the vets. Yeah. How do we cool do video. that? There we go. What's the beast equipment? Give me it. Three three words. What's the blade? Uh, team of OILC. Four forehand rubber. Uh, o nine Dignix O nine C. Backhand rubber. Dignix O five. There you go. Benji's been playing for about a year. What rec uh, recommended bats? It's very difficult to say, Benji, without seeing you. To be honest, without seeing each player and how often you get in coaching, who your coach is. What I would say is, yeah, ask ask uh, your local coaches. See what your players of similar ability are playing with. Um, definitely, definitely do not go straight to Tenergy's or Big Mix. That is what every beginner does with that coach, and it's the worst thing you can do. It'll probably set you back a year whilst you then go and work uh, out. Yes, Maurizio, we need you in this chat. Every time someone asks a question about <laughs> Beast uh, equipment, you copy and paste, son. We're loving it. Luca asks, Louis, are you ready for Cardiff GP? Yeah, I am ready. When is that taking uh, Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. Oh! So that must that must mean you and definitely the Welsh Dragon will be playing. Me, there, right? Welsh Dragon pockets also there. Pocket, it's yeah. a TTD affair. Who who do you know any of the other big seeds that are playing? Uh, I know there's Jai Ji Wu. One, one Jai Dominican Wu being like yes, the top fifty yes. in the world. Yeah, what's he playing. doing playing there? Uh, I. I don't know, he's just, <laughs> he's, I just, don't know what, he's just rocked he's, up. He's in Cardiff uh, for a holiday and he thought, yeah. why don't I play? Um, so, well, he, yeah. yeah. Gavin Rumgay's in there. Rumgay's, that's fantastic, isn't it? We need to do a better job in the UK of streaming these finals or recording them and putting them out there. Jai yeah. you then. What are we, uh, you, are you going to try and do some undercover business and try and maybe slip him the idea of playing at the ping pod full time? Playing for maybe. TTD. Maybe, that'd be a good, <laughs> that'd be a good thing. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Let's have a look. What else have we got going on there? Fun fact, the Frog and Mika used to play in the same league in Sweden. Yeah. Luca's got to play you tomorrow in the under-21s. What do you want the Beast to do? Do you want him to show you mercy or do you want to get full fat Beast when he gives you all his best serves and all his best bombs? <laughs> you Let's... never know. He might, he might beat me. Yeah. You never know. I, I imagine that. Never know. We'd have to sign up Luca straight yeah. into the team. Go full out. That's what we want. Opinion on the cyber shapes and the DNAs. You know who's the best person to ask on that? 
He's on the table right now, getting warm for his next match. Tom the Frog absolutely loves the Stiga series. Um, great for feeling, but once we get him in the booth a little bit later, ask the question again, Aaron. Uh, beast mode 24-7, absolutely. The crowd, I can hear them going. What's Benji said about Dignix or Tenergy? Yes, they seem like good uh, choices, definitely. Find people who, yeah, are in and around you, who are watching you play. That's the best advice I can give you. Daniel Petit says the sticky rubber is the best. All right, small talk over. The frog on the table. Colin on the table. The gaffer has just come in the room. Let's go and check this out. Combo, the long fast serve, and then follow up with the backhand drive. I am loving the addition of the drum into the pod. I think we could do a get like a trombone or something. Yeah, that would be funny. Or a cowbell. The ultras would love it there in the <laughs> corner. <laughs> Absolutely loaded. Yeah, it's a very good server. Mm. It's Colin. TTD SL Deja Vu. That's right. You'll be able to find these two playing on the TTD X channel. Yeah. Great backhand save at the time. Yeah, Tom has an underrated backhand. He gets a lot of uh, a lot of comments saying that he's weak and he doesn't hit the ball particularly hard. He does everything yeah. very, very well. It's good. There's, there's a lot of quality on it. Oh, like, he doesn't miss. Like. Daniel Petit, he's watching with what's got to be the youngest TTD fan. Once he saw me, he started shouting, Uncle. Not that I'm aware of that. Oh. Oh. Colin with a backhand of his own. Absolute bomb. How much importance, Beast, do you put on trying to get to six points first in the match? Or does it something that actually doesn't bother you too much? Uh, I don't, it doesn't bother me too much about six points. It's all like, I just try, try to be as mentally strong as possible. Even if I'm down a couple of points, just try and find a way. That's the main thing, because this sport is all mental. It's so mental. Like, anything can happen, you just have to try to be mentally strong absolutely yeah be there in the right here right now right every yeah. player has a bad day every player wakes up with cramp in their legs and that you know anyone can beat anyone Tom the Frog there hit a lovely backhand in that last rally but straight into Colin's backhand Colin was able he was ready and primed for it sent the punch back wonder if Tom the Frog's going to start to mix up the placement a little bit play into the forehand Another good point. You can see that Tom really wants this, this victory. Whoa. Great hands by Colin. A flick off the net, that ball's loaded. Comes in, still handles it. TTDSL Deja Vu definitely is here. Oh, 
on the mimicry with his hands. He knows that serve receive is yeah. super key. As you said, Colin's a very good yeah. server. I think what Tom should do here, when uh, Colin gives him the really heavy ball, sometimes it's better just to give all the spin, no! push, give a heavy push now. Yeah, he's trying to keep it short, it goes half long, it's better just dig it long. Yeah. And then wait for the block, especially in Tom's game style. Yeah. Amazing. Brilliant placement. Straight down the middle of the table. Right into that awkward crossover point. We always say it. Big spin from the frog. Crowd love it. Takes the first set, 11-7. That backhand, winning him. Froggy's points. on fire. Froggy is on fire. We got a comment there saying who's on next. Uh, up next is the battle of the number ones. So it's Callum, the Welsh dragon from TTD and Hugo, the Swedish sensation from uh, North Ayrshire. So that promises to be a very, very good matchup. Battle of two very big forehands, yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. Froggy then, firing. Yeah, he's playing very well. Yeah. He's also, tactically, it was doing much better towards the yeah, second yeah. half of that set. It you can down a bit. Or... I think I made a line on one of the TTD videos once that he has a PhD in tactics. He yeah. should be Dr. <laughs> Thomas Maynard. And he really is. He is one of those players that point to point is thinking, okay, what did I do? What did my opponent do? What's the trap that I want to set for him? Or where do I want to be unpredictable? And he, he really is at that level where he's thinking it through. Why is he called the Swedish sensation? Because he is a blimming good player. And you're going to see him up next. Tom isn't TTD number one. No, what I mean is after this match, it's going to be the battle of the number ones. Or that Tom isn't the TTD number one, in which case Callum has earned his spot as our number one. There you go. All right. Boys are going back out onto the table anytime soon. Let's go and have a look. point that one. Frog being nice and aggressive. Colin holding the first few, then seeing an opportunity to attack back and counter. Felix saying you're supposed to put your strongest player in position one, right? Yes. But Tom is actually playing at position three today. So Callum has earned his right at uh, position one. Then the battle for the other two positions, you can mix your players as when you choose to. So there's an argument, to be honest, for both of these teams, that the players at number three, being Colin and Tom, arguably should be the number twos. But you can manipulate those two numbers as you want to, to try and get more favourable matchups. Sorry. The flick of the net. I've got a comment there wondering about uh, I watch 100% of the TCD content and your wife does as well. That's great. She wonders why we never see any associated females, wives, girlfriends. That's a very... Maybe we should start filming the wags. Oh! Might have been a little bit lucky, Tom. Throwing up the finger, but it looked like a great block up the line. With a bit of side spin on there. Just hopped on. Is the doubles match done? It is. North Ayrshire were too classy for the Frog and the Welsh Dragon. They took it. Another funny point there. Well, I'm just using good feeling. And this is what I mean. He's quite different to Martin. Martin, a lot of power, likes to hit the ball hard, likes to try and kill the point. Colin's got a lot of feeling, a lot of 
variety to his play. You see the frog there having a laugh. Colin sent that beautifully off to the crossover point, so off to Tom's right uh, elbow. Tom reacted really well and just managed to jam a forehand in there and get away with it. It's Callum leaving TTD after this lead. Oh! It's a thing of beauty. That backhand early switch up the line yeah. is such a good tactic against yeah. anyone. Yeah. Great serve. Uh, that was like the ringer. Switch. The clock's feeling it. The, re the reverse serve is another serve um, that's really difficult to know what spins on it, where it's landing on the table until like the ball has really left the bat and then hit the first point on the table, right, uh -huh. to understand what's on it. Another good spin. Colin doing well again, finding the frogs. Crossover point, forcing them away from the table. Frog though, very, very sound. Just spinning the ball, happy to spin the ball into place. Come on, Froggy. Matches class, two very good players. Yes, Kevin, two very good players who are just great feeling. Go! Yes! Frog though, with all the momentum. 25 up, five. Five points to secure this second set. Read it well. Great anticipation from Colin. Not diving in too early. Trying to predict a short serve. He's ground. A beautiful back end to it. That's the difficulty on short serves, right? You're trying to equally keep your receive so short yeah. that it's really difficult then, and more often than not, you accidentally put it in the net, trying to go a little bit too short. The frog there, doing the opposite, doing exactly what you suggested, yeah. banging it long, send it long, as heavy backspin as you can possibly get to that back line. The frog then, two new up. Let's come back into the booth. Do we have any advice on how to get better at table tennis off the table? That's a that's a good question, <laughs> off right? Off the table. So, I like to uh, I like to actually mimic serve. Uh, uh, more often than not, I'll be stood in my office and people will go, "What are you doing?" And I'll just be mimicking serve uh, without a bat and ball in my hand, just to get the feeling through. Um, obviously, lots of lots of um, agility drills that the pocket started to do recently with things like ladders on the floor and moving your feet really fast just to get it in. Yeah. yeah, I guess you can mimic technique in the mirror as well. Yeah, I mean, this is maybe a bit of a strange one, but I know a lot of people are using this 11 table tennis thing and they're actually, you, like, actually kind of training yeah. on this and they, they, they say it helps them in the real table tennis. Yes, I mean, those VR headsets are really, yeah. really something yeah, special, right? Yeah. All right, Beast, in three words, give Daniel. Why are you not playing? Uh, German league. <laughs> yeah, that's two. <laughs> I wonder if the first league doesn't allow the TTD nickname T-shirts. You are the first person, Felix, to say that, and you are absolutely right. Yeah, we have to have names on there. All right, third set. All for Colin to do. Can he drag this one back and make it a battle? Or... But I'm probably going to take this. Heavy spin there from Colin. It's really good advice from lots of numbers there. Watch a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah, there's lots of good content. Oh! oh look at that one. Beautiful backhand from Colin. I was talking all the way through it. Check this out though. Flick the net, gets it back, bang! Wow. 
beautiful. He, he does like that backhand from fire. Yeah. In a big rally. Yeah, he's got a good backhand, trying to uh, pin back. Oh, the combo again from Tom. The three-piece chicken combo. The long, heavy, fast serve into the backhand. It comes back and you drill the next backhand as hard as you can. Wait, your production is actually insane. First time tuning in. It is, thank you very much. We're working very, very hard. We've got multiple camera angles for you. Look at this around here. We actually as well, that's a good point. We didn't even use our head-to-head -head graphic. We were too busy oh. chatting away. Uh. Let's go back to it. Do you always take your towel break every six points? Yeah, I try to, just to give myself a, a bit more time to think and... Oh, he's being forced back, yeah. Oh. I think that was a side. That was Hopefully. As close as it can get, you'll use VAR and have a look. Look at this. Colin getting forced back. Frog out there. Yeah. Ball goes down. Martin knew as well. You can you tend to be able to know as well from the sound, don't you? I'm out called them. The frog. Bruising, it would seem. Again, what do you do when you're if you're the frog in this situation? Yeah. What do you just Keep going, or do you try and do you try and anticipate what Colin's going to change up, and therefore you change up ahead of that, or do you just get in your own head? I, I think that what's going to happen is Colin's just going to put the ball on the table, and I hope that Tom tries to make some silly mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think he's not going to. I don't think knowing him, he's not going to go for everything. That's interesting. He's just he's just going to try play it safe. Hope that Tom gets a bit like. Because he's a few points up, starts overthinking a bit. My, my advice, if I was in Colin's corner, would be saying, have a little bit more Martin about you, actually. Yeah. Try, and, try and kill some of these balls. Because ultimately, you're 2-0 down and yeah. you're 2-5 down. Yeah. And, and I think to also try and outfeed yeah. him and out-rally Tom is very difficult. Yeah. He has to change start, something. Start taking risks, yeah. yeah. What, it, what's the worst that's going to yeah. happen? You're going to lose. Yeah. yeah. Tom, smoking this guy, getting revenge from TTDSL. So far, we know that things can change very, very quickly. And Colin is a very, very good, tactically adept player. See what he does here. Right, there you go, that's what I mean. A little bit more risk. Don't just hold it. Go after it. Got a question for the beast. How do you set up your pre-rally tactics? You have a vague understanding of how a rally will go as you serve. Yeah, I do. I always I always plan the points out in that way. For example, if I do a topspin serve, I'm gonna be waiting for a for a flick or for a yeah, normally for a flick. So I'd keep my racket high. It's from Tom. The crowd loves it. Yeah, I'd keep my racket high and I'd definitely uh, if as a lefty, I'm normally serving into people's forehands, so I know they're probably going to play in my backhand. Yeah, so either I can try to step around early or play a good placement backhand. Wow, yeah, that's good. Colin's just started to up the tempo. He's started yeah. to put a little bit more, a little bit more hot sauce on some of these shots. Even that last rally, it was a big top to top, and he took the opportunity to, to start going. I think he try, he has to try and be the aggressive here. <laughs> Froggy though with a big spin. Big heavy spin. TTD tryouts. That's definitely something we should do. Whoa. We'd have to host one in the UK, yeah. and one in Sweden, one in Germany. Tom is playing so excellent. Like a different player, yeah? It is a critical match. Tom then on serve. Two points up. Loaded with spin. And that's the difficulty with the uh you might get a better view of it here if he does it again. With the with the um reverse serve, it's so you know it's gonna be loaded with side spin. But it's also is it loaded with a little bit of top? Is it loaded with a little bit of back? That's then how it becomes so difficult, it's difficult to, to see to get the ball back. Playing the wings really, really well there, Colin. Is it 
a little bit too late, though. You never mentioned the French League. Yes. French League, very, very strong. Oh! Beautiful. Finding that gap, that space really well. Have a look. Sending the ball out to Frog's backhand to then go up the line. Beautiful. Just in time for the next point. Yeah! And that's what I mean about the serve, right? The, re the reverse serve. You know it's loaded. It's just trying to guess how much top or how much back is on it. Massive from the frog. 3 0. Pumped. Crowd loving it. He's going to be buzzing after that. That's one. a huge match for TTD because that ties it 2 2 with North Ayrshire. We got a. Uh... Look at the celebrations. We got a comment there, Beast. Um, any tips to improve the forehand block on a spinny ball and one of those really heavy, slow ones? Yeah. So, what are you thinking? When, I mean, you just, you don't even block it, I, you batter it. Yeah. Normally I try to counter it, but you definitely have to adjust your racket angle. If your racket Absolutely. angle's too open, the ball's gonna Absolutely. fly off. Yes, and, and I often find with those heavy spins, yeah. people wanna just hold their bat static. Yeah, you have, hit, you, have to, you have to go yes, through it. Like, you have to give it some back. Yeah, just a little bit of force behind it. That's yes. where we, we tend to use the thumb for the backhand. Yes. So you press a little bit through the ball to control it. And it's exactly the same for the forehand, but your pressure comes from the finger. Yeah. You also have to see what type of ball the other person. If it's a higher spinny, maybe you can go a bit harder. Absolutely. If it's really low, it's better to just block it, take it a bit earlier or later, change the timing point. And this is a beast masterclass. Sling. Yeah. And sling it on. Yeah, you just go battering through. Colin didn't play well there, despite his uh, Prem support. Yeah, he. I, I, I think to be honest with you, the frog came out of that firing, yeah. wanting to prove. No, he had to step up. No, he had to take it. You saw once Colin started to go back at it, he was actually getting some joy. Um, but yeah, a little bit, a little bit too late. Yeah, active block so important. It is. It really is, especially when you start to play against these type of guys who mix the spin and mix the pace on the ball. Have to really, really be, uh, be almost aggressive on it. We need a ping pod in Berlin, says Felix. Definitely shout them out on their Instagram page. Go and let them know that you want one. Uh, in the, in Berlin, what else have we got? TTD to open a ping pod in central London. Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Um, go, go, Hisham says, go, go Scotland with the snowman emoji. That is definitely accurate. Uh, they've got a lot of support down here though. The boys doing well, 2-2, two, two, locked in. What do we got? King of the Pond, definitely. <laughs> Daniel Petit with the frog emoji. Beautiful. All right. Up next, we have a big one. Do not leave us. It is going to be Callum, the Welsh Dragon, against Hugo, the number one from North Ayrshire. It's going to be an amazing match. Stay with us. Yes guys, so we just want to take a quick break from this stream to shout out to our partners, BetterPlay.ai. Now BetterPlay is an awesome website which highlights your full match down to just the points played. We're going to be using the software to edit this stream and release it as a highlight form, so stay tuned for that. So guys, if you want to improve your table tennis today, head over to BetterPlay.ai or click the links in the description for more. Here we go. Who's playing next? Yeah, so Callum, the Welsh Dragon. Uh, it's the two number ones versus Hugo Tongren for North Ayrshire TT. This is going to be a big, fun one. Hugo actually got a lot of joy against Pocket by pivoting and hitting this big, massive forehand uh, and looked very, very impressive in the forehand top-to-top -to -top rallies. It's going to be very interesting to see how Callum gets on. Uh, obviously, forehand being his major weapon as well. Beast, you mentioned earlier that these two have spent some time in SWAT together yeah, training and playing. I know a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, when Cal was in uh, SLOV, they, mm -hmm. they trained together a lot. I was speaking with him earlier and he's told me he knows how to play him a bit. Yeah. And yeah. Does it make it easier or more difficult to play against someone you've played against a thousand times? It's both, because you both know how to how yeah. to play each other, it's styles as well. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. It it's just different, like, I can expect big rallies because they kind of almost... It's like when I play with Dan, he almost knows already where my ball's yeah, coming. Yeah. I know where his ball's coming. 
some of the matches that yeah that I've seen you and Dan have or Dan and Tom in particular yeah. some of the rallies you see because they just know each other's games so well yeah. the rallies are unbelievable yeah. it helps having 24-7 cameras in here you really need to uh, really need to start getting some of that content out there any tips on a better receive on serves that's a really good point so uh, I guess what uh, being a beginner if we start there coming in uh, to the sport you often get scared by people's serves right yes. this weird motion that isn't in any other sport when you think about the pendulum motion it's in no other sport you've never yes. seen it before and then not only that this ball comes out and it's spinning all over the place yeah. I think exactly the same as the blocking you have to be active yeah. so always try and do something with the serve receiver. you have to be right? ready for the serve get low exactly tracking. yeah bat up high because again they might play yeah. fast to you um, yeah, yeah. Uh, my advice would always be try and do something to the receiver don't just let it hit your back if you let it hit your back it's going to react and go up or sideways or wherever yeah. or into the net try and do something you might get the wrong uh, you know you might try and flick a heavy backspin serve and it goes straight in the net but that's really good intel into what you should be doing next time around yeah the founder has just walked in the building what a game we even got we even got the frog here behind and the a scenes. very very what? sweaty frog what a match that was oh, was very sweaty frog yeah that was <laughs> fantastic in the zone you were buzzing was in the zone yeah lots of people were saying about you got revenge for the ttdsl yeah i did i just uh je just asked me about that as well so <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah i was well up for it you got a whole yeah. whole team are you, are you coming in the chair here uh, you no because i'm going to be on shortly again soon but i will beast, jump in beast soon. has had his beast had had his beast been brilliant people love the beast right. see you guys enjoy yep. the rest of the match yes there you go we got some I'm love. Beast, you're going out right. to coach. I'm on coaching duty. Who's coming in here with me? Am I so... you got me, sir. For, for the, the for founder. The Let's go. He's not even playing today and he's still got the headband Listen, on. the headband brings 10% <laughs> to your game, even if you're not on the table. Fantastic. Guys, give me some love for the founder. Yeah. Beast, we will see you very, very shortly. How was the Beast, Joe? Yeah. Beast was good fantastic. Skills? He was good lad, lots of inside knowledge. Yeah. He's a good lad, this guy. He's a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there, was a, there was a comment uh, about Beast. How can I get really good on blocking those heavy spin uh, uh, balls that go to my forehand? Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we should have said the bridge, but it was laughable because it was like, Beast doesn't actually block those balls. He just batters them. <laughs> yeah, he actually does. He just he counters. Yeah. No, he's very aggressive. He, and that's what he tells me as well. In Germany, they're just training like very high risk shots but all the time yeah then it becomes consistent yeah 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 you know where are we at then wow it's 2-2 two, two. Two, two. We, we've been calling it all, all week this is going to be a really close tight match right it's, there's so yeah. many 50-50 many matchups which is what's making this match so good yes um, and again I mean Hugo versus Callum right now it's I don't know it's just so tight battle of the number ones it is it is yeah and, and Beast was saying about these two have spent a lot of time in Eslov training together true I mean I know yeah I mean this Hugo apparently practices with trolls quite a bit he's a nice it does him, not so. surprise me Look you can tell with the backhand there. yeah Look at this backhand <laughs> that's a trolls backhand if I've ever seen one it so is yeah what do we think then guys let us know in the comments who do we see winning this and by how many sets are they going to win it? Is it going to be a three love win for either or? Is it going to be a five uh, set classic? What are we thinking? The dragon playing little let's, trolls. Let's, yeah, let's do it now. It's, uh, it's going to be. It's more like big trolls because he's a little bit taller than trolls. I think. Hugo. But this is going to be a very, very good match. I think this could come down to whoever starts getting their forehand in early and targets the wide forehand. But we saw Hugo didn't miss a forehand top to top earlier. I was wondering why the camera was shaking. Then look at the gaffers down there. It's the cameraman. Yeah, he's just going to the left a little bit. All right, let's have one final look then at the heads to heads we were saying how unbelievably strong is sweden mm -hmm. for hugo to not even be mm -hmm. top it's, 50. it's phenomenal yeah let's go then callum to serve it off <laughs> loads you can see loaded with spin yeah it's good quality even at this level you can see like the pushing the touch in is 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 a high level and it's so important because if you're losing the serve receive the point's almost over. I'm surprised Callum hasn't got in here. There's been two balls now, but I've come along to his backhand. He's just re-pushed it, and that's really important for him to get in there. So, might be a little bit nervous. Again there, half long. That's better. Oh. 
Yeah, I agree. Just take the impetus away. It's got to be a little bit careful. We went to pivot straight away on that first serve receive. Hugo's very clever. We'll start to target. There you go, into the forehand to stop him doing that. The block. You say it every single game. If you can aim a good ball at your opponent's elbow where they're holding the bat, it always gives you good, good 100%, results. Right? Yeah, because it's really hard to move there and you're not too sure where the ball's going, so it gets caught in your body. And Key, key placement, key placement. Good serve there. The Welsh Dragon. Up in the show. How good is it? The atmosphere in here today as well. Though. It's been insane. It's been so much fun down there. Yeah, that, that We've got Mully, who is now our um, fan engagement officer. He's trying to kick in the fans and just get them up buzzing with his drum. It's brilliant. I see him there. Sorry. Yeah, again, I think Hugo's short game is very, very good because, like you say, there looks like there's a few balls here. But Oh, attackable. Callum just not taking the opportunity. I think that's possibly because there's something that we're not seeing. Possibly a, a bit of spin. Yeah, for sure. You could... Oh, the problem with having an audience, <laughs> someone's phone goes off. That was like a Dane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. very. Dane trains in Eslov sometimes. That's much better backhand uh, positivity from uh, Callum. Oh, that's oh. well class. That is... Crowd goes wild. <laughs> hey, let's have a look. Beautiful placement. Again, what we're going to see, Hugo with a heavy, heavy spin. Callum absorbs it. Absorbs it. Find the space. World class. Beautiful. So just like that. Callum's won the last four points on the spin. Yeah. He's got to be aggressive. He's so, he's so good when he's aggressive, Callum. Punch the thing of beauty. Look who's in the comments here. That Dane's in. <laughs> Look at Dane, he's such a joker. He's such a hustler, this guy. Dane doesn't practice in Eslov sometimes. Come on, Dane, don't lie, you're always training. Big from Callum gets that forehand in. It's critical to him. You know who else we had in the comments? Go on. The commentator goat himself, Adam Bobro, was in here giving wow, us some love. Yeah, right. amazing. Big shout out to Bobro doing some good things right now in the table tennis world. Good things, I mean, very good things. <laughs> what a touch. Sorry. Again, yeah. No, I'm saying it when I'm on the sideline earlier. I was like, this is some high quality table tennis today. Yeah. The touch play, the. I think yeah, Hugo the definitely. Serve receives. Definitely has a, an advantage in the short play. Yeah. <laughs> ah! One of my most favourite shots about the Welsh Dragon is his rescue shot. Like mm. when he's off position, he's very good at like still hitting it back into play with quality. Whereas a lot of players when they're out of position, they like blob it on, then you, then the point's over, right? Callum's very good at still like putting that pressure on the ball. Yeah. Yeah, from both the hip and then a, there was a yeah. right backhand there as well, right? <laughs> yeah, you can see Hugo's motion. When he goes to serve, receive, he's really, there's a lot of bat motion there. Yeah. You know he's absolutely loading them up. I think this is it now with table tennis at the high, high, high level. The very first point has to be of good quality. Otherwise, you're just under too much pressure. So even on a receiver serve, you, you've got to make sync on the ball. This is strong, strong pivots. Backhand punch, set him off there as well. He says, let's go, Callum. Get that forehand in. Definitely. Yeah. It's going to be his key to victory here, it feels like. Yeah, we can't have Hugo attacking first like he's doing. It's just, it's too safe and quality. Mm. Yeah. Very good from Hugo. Mm. I, think, I think Callum needs to start playing more down the line on the first ball. Because he's very good at turning, Hugo, and he's turning straight away. Yeah, we said that for the pocket against Hugo. Yeah, it was very similar. And actually, we kept telling pocket on the sideline, and I think it actually oh. made... Oh, hi, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, the pressure into mm. that wide, wide forehand. And, and pocket was just like, guys, I can't, I can't find it. And yeah. it was making him under pressure, I think. Sometimes you just got to let pocket go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Fire up the rockets. <laughs> Start the launch sequence. Yeah.
Oh, what a serve. <laughs> wow, how did he get topspin on that? Let's have a look. This is why it's so key to try and disguise your serve motion as best as possible. Have one, one setup motion for every serve. Yeah, you come right. Oh, wow. What That's a time to do that as well. Amazing. It's huge. Nine all, following the towel break on Hugo's two serves. Got Callum doing the uh, Walton a serve challenge the other day. He smashed it <laughs> in about five serves. Oh, talking of serves. Hugo dumps one. Wow. Mm. Here we go then. Ah, that needed the troll's punch, really. Yeah, you need on those balls. There needs to be some way of just applying pressure because you can't, it's not mm. good enough to just play a passive block to that as well because Hugo's going to hit the next one. 10 10. How are your nerves? No, 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 honestly, all, all match, it's been so intense back, back and forth, hasn't it? Really important game, this one for uh, T2D. Ah, good serve. Clever from Callum there, because he knows that Hugo's a little bit indecisive, so served half long because he's coming in for that flick. Dan, you need to give your headband to Callum. It will make a difference. Ooh, it it will. will. It will give him 10%. And right now, Callum doesn't need that 10%. Hmm? Oh, this is where he... Oh! Wow, Hugo missed his banker. Massive hold. Crowd loving it. Atmosphere booming right now. There you go. Wow. I'm doing well because he, really he was down well. in that set to start off. Yeah. Yeah, he has to be aggressive, right? And if Hugo gets that heavy backhand spin, he has to find a way to apply pressure. Mm -hmm. If it's a passive block, then it has to at least move Hugo, right? Yeah, we saw that amazing uh, replay earlier when Callum went wide to the forehand. I think Callum's really got to do that as much as possible. He almost got away with it there in that mm. last point. That's Hugo's territory, that pivot forehand, and, and Hugo, you know, missed it. But I feel like Callum's got to switch it because. Hugo's got a lot of experience. He's very clever. He yeah. takes his time. You know, we know he's he's a, he's 50 in Sweden, which is an extremely high level. Yeah. I don't know what that relates to the UK level, but it, it's higher, 50 in UK in, in Sweden. Yeah, look, we uh, uh, we got a comment from lots of numbers. The Beast mentioned 11 TT earlier, and he yeah. was saying about uh, lots of people are now saying that they're using it as a bit of a training tool to just keep their eye on. What do you? Yeah, I know that you've, yeah, you've, yeah. you've you think this this game is amazing, right? No, for sure. Yeah, no. And um, we we was in Dusseldorf the other day actually with some of the pros from Dusseldorf because there's going to be the VR European Championships next month in January. And uh, yeah, some of the pros are playing it, and I'm like, this is so realistic. It, it's nuts. That's madness that yeah. pros are playing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so great. And it is getting, like, the developers are always working on it and getting it better and better, and getting feedback from players as well yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, but the spin mechanics is a lot better than, yeah. like, let's say, two years ago. It's, it's, it's impressive. Yes. Yeah, it's very, very good. If you've, uh, yeah, if you've got a headset, you definitely need to get 11VR downloaded. Sure. The Quest 3 as well is crazy. The, you've got one, right? The Mixed Reality, have you tried it? I've actually got one for Christmas. It's waiting oh, and I'm yes. being good. I am waiting oh. until Christmas you've Day. You've wrapped it up it. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I, also, I think what's helping here, we're home advanced, right? Our crowd's going crazy. It's put a bit of pressure on the other players, to be fair to them. Like, yeah. It's not easy out there. So you see Hugo here is missing his, his, like, mm. his weapon. It's yeah. forehand weapon and it and it's missing quite a bit out there. Is it worth getting a headband just for eleven table tennis? Listen. <laughs> get a headband for anything you're doing in life, it's fantastic. <laughs> Even if you're commentating. Yeah. The Welsh dragon feeling this. Starting to spread his wings. How many dragon puns do you reckon we can get? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the guys out there is always shouting one over, it's great. The dragon slayer. <laughs> <laughs> what I like with Callum is his mentality. He's very like calm but aggressive. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You don't really see him have any outburst. He's got a lot of strong aggression but controlled. It's really nice mentality. Get kicked. See Hugo getting frustrated now. Yeah. What a mental battle this game is as well. Good. Someone shouts from the crowd. Ooh, look at that. Again, do you see how Hugo pivoted, right? Yeah. If, if Callum goes to block that wide forehand, it's going to cause all yeah, sorts of problems. Yeah, it's going to so, make him step. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's, I'll tell you what, though, being up here, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to say that when you see it from here. I often think that when we're commentating and us guys in the comments as well are like, oh, the yeah. frog, his backhand's not really working. And yeah. then you realise, like, he's a very... 
Oh, that's rotation. Let's have a look. Let's go for the replay. We're going to see some side spin on this one, Joe. Yeah, that one really kicked. That final ball, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's where Callum's at his best. Oof. In early, on loading forehands. Tell you what, the replay's really working good now, isn't it? <laughs> Great from Roger. <laughs> Roger Federer. There we go, you know what? Hugo struggling when he's spinning that first one and Callum just took all the pace of it, just passively blocked it onto yeah. the table. You can't punch that ball because there's not enough True. spin or power coming through it. Yeah, using, using what's coming to him. Almost Moses style, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Dan Moses. Hopefully we'll get him in the pod sometime soon. Okay, he switched him that time, but it wasn't, it was, you know, want enough aggression. Both yeah. players were just, yeah, Hugo's got a quality forehand. <laughs> Lucky that idea. I wonder when Callum's going to pull out that, that short topspin serve again to the forehand. Mm -hmm. Even if you know if Hugo reads it and plays a forehand flick, at least you can try and counter off that. Well, that was it, I thought that was it. Yeah. Well. That's how good his serve is. Yeah. Slow balling. Hugo. Get, good. Get again, he's, bluff. He's, he's adjusted. His first few points, like you said, he was trying to hit through the ball and it mm. wasn't working. He's adjusted now. We saw this with Hugo versus Pocket. Hugo adapted his tactics really well. Mm. I like about Callum's good spin. When you see Callum come in for a short forehand receive, his, his finger, his index finger goes right up it's the middle of the bat to help, mm -hmm. yeah, to help that feeling on the ball. Yeah, it's, it's very Timo-like. You got a wide forehand. Yeah. That's it. Oh. Nice. You called it. I think that's Callum fist pumping to the team there because probably someone on the sideline has called it as well. Like, look, play wide forehand. Hugo needs the cyber shape. That's very interesting. Well, when we were in yeah. Sweden a few months back, right? Everyone felt like everyone was using yeah, it. It's, yeah, I mean, obviously Stiga are from Sweden mm. and they have a huge uh, market out there. It's massive. Yeah. And with Trolls using it as well, many of the top players in, in Sweden are using it now. <laughs> Brilliant from Callum again, finding joy in that wide forehand. Yeah, it helps right when you go to release a product like Stiga did with the yeah. cyber shape and you get your, oh, yeah. your marquee player goes to the World Championships and pulls off some of the most ridiculous shots yeah. and comeback wins that I've ever seen and gets all the way to the final. That really... Uh, that was crazy. That helps prove yeah. that your product's good, right? For sure. We couldn't have planned that any better. Oh, yeah. lucky. Right idea. Nice. Big heavy spin. Hugo has got a very, very spinny backhand opener. Yeah. He's hell by the way. He's always doing it. Yeah. Missed that time as well. Mm. Two nine. key points there for Callum, really. Two forehands. We, me and Pocket were saying earlier, Callum, his forehand, it's very Ma Long like. Yeah. Big swing, it's very relaxed. He's got really good touch on the ball. It's interesting, he plays with Dignix, right? 09C on the yeah. forehand, but it's, it comes off like he's playing with uh, with a hurricane. The way it yeah, yeah. stays so low. But uh, the Dignix 09C is the like tacky Chinese style rubber, you know? and. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Callum, because he's very relaxed, he gets that speed to get the, the contact. Yeah, he gets a lot of top spin. Two big serves needed here. <laughs> ah, it's three times. Slightly longer serve received there. Into the middle. Hugo, that good, he could just adjust to it. Mm. Yeah, Hugo's starting to read the pivot of the Welsh Dragon. I wonder if he's going to send this one wide forehand. Oh! 
both players are so tense. So this is such a key set for. I feel both players. I feel like if Callum takes this set, he's two new up. Yeah. Hugo's under pressure. If Hugo wins a set, he's going to be relaxed and start getting into the game. Yeah, you saw that against Pocket when he yes. went up in that third set, right? Yeah, that's key. <laughs> nice. Switch play. Callum then on serve. Kevin says he's been waiting for this match for two weeks and it hasn't disappointed. This is great to hear, Kevin. Stick. Even Beast last night messaged me, Dan, I can't wait for tomorrow match. It's going to be so much fun. I was like, this is great to hear, Beast. <laughs> Here we go. Set point. It's that time he got it. Crowd love it. Yeah, I think Hugo's going to have to start going out into Callum's forehand if he, mm -hmm. if he wants, wants some joy. Tight though, right? Yeah, it was. Quality. Mm. Yeah. But this time Callum was like, this forehand's going on. Yeah. I'm going to get that damn thing on. He just missed three in a row well, and it's his key shot. It's a little bit different as well when you, when you feed a topspin serve to someone like Hugo, who you know is going to read it. He's not going to mm -hmm. misread it, yeah. bar that one earlier. He's going to come in and flick it, which then means your, your pivot and your forehand can then be stronger. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you're not having to lift the backspin. For sure. You just go straight, straight through. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. It's not coming over with some dodgy spin. That, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. yeah clever. Obro is an elite entertainer. Should, he is. He'd be he so is. great to have in here. I wouldn't have to get him down here. We should maybe get him in on like a Zoom type thing on this, like get him to have his five minutes of like, what he thinks of the game halfway yeah, through. Be great, epic. Right? Yeah, 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 he's also Team Ping Pod. Yeah, 11. Nice. 11 VR. Yes, in, 11 TNT. In the room. Yes. Let's go. We're going to be playing on Christmas Day. You know that. I'm going to drop you a text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be like, Dan. When uh, your Quest 3 comes out yeah, underneath yeah. the Christmas tree. I'll be like, Dan, I know you've got a daughter, but you need to be playing with her toys. But, mate, give me yeah. five minutes. We're going to come and play. Yeah, yeah, 100%. For sure. The umpire calling time. This is a massive set for the Welsh Dragon. Yeah, this is huge now. He's got momentum. Uh, Hugo's under a lot of pressure here. And, and this is a key game. Mm. And I'm just taking the opportunity to wipe the table face with the, uh, with the towel, get any dust and get any sweat off. Last thing you want is anything on the table that could affect the bounce, especially in a, in a game as tight as this one. You should get an open tournament in the ping pod arena. That's fantastic. That would be great. I feel like we did the teeth of the open, that was good, wasn't it? Mm, definitely. We had lots of um, requests for the open. Yeah, we did. Yeah. It's a shame we don't have access to Cardiff mm. to get the uh, venue. We need to get a venue, really. Big, Go big back hall. to Hereford. Mm. The top spin serves. Good. Like them. Good change. Mm. Tactics are so important in table yeah. They're so important. Especially when you have someone who's as good as Hugo is, at those touch receives on short backspin balls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's like the Dane. He's a Swede who's turned into a yeah. Dane. <laughs> That's a, such a Dane shot, isn't it? It is. How Long. Dane pulls that forehand out of his pocket down the line. Okay. Hugo's, Hugo's a bit more loose. He's just slinging the serves in now. He looks a bit more like, I'm just going to go for this. I was feeling it. Ping pod in 11 would be amazing for the game. <laughs> <That would. laughs> Why isn't the founder playing? You're not seeing the level of play today, boys <laughs> and girls. No, I, I played the last match, of course. Highlights are out now on YouTube. Um, but for this game, we sent out the, uh, the top three guys. North Ayrshire, strong side. Oh, what a serve receive. Oh, oh, I loaded it with spin. That serve receive was a thing of beauty, though. Go going to long fast serves again, trying to kill the points early. A little frustrated. Yeah, Callum's touch and receiver has been very, very good. Oh. The, con oh, the control there from Callum, you know. I mean, we were talking about this a lot on the sideline. He's so good at even when he's on the back foot, he's still able to put pressure on the ball. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. he still, he doesn't like block passive and weird, you know? Like when we get caught, let's say Joe, we, the ball might blob back, you know, a bit <laughs> in, dodgy. In the Bristol League. In the Bristol League, yeah. it bobbles back and then you're chipping and lobbing for saving your life, right? Whereas Callum doesn't seem to fall into that problem. Like yeah, he, still has a, always... he just seems to just still like, hit it yeah. through. Yeah, he's very Amazing. good at that wide one yeah. as well, like, to backhand. Yeah, and it, there, just, yeah. and it just goes on. Like it's just like Samsonoff-like. Yeah. 
we got there. Why don't we get towel holders instead of these baskets? This is... Right, now, do you really want to know? There's, yes. a, there's about a million things that go into making this stream, right? Like, <laughs> wait, this is all wonderful, but the effort that goes into it, I've been trying all week for a towel box. I've, I tried everything. Because I don't want to play it, like, leaning over. Maybe their back goes or saying, ain't great. Um, but, yeah, what did we try and do to get a towel box? Wow, we tried everything. Surely we just... What, buy one. Go and buy the, one. The problem is in the UK, the distributors oh. don't hold them because it's too much storage space. So they get them from like abroad. Okay. And then we didn't have time in the postage. So I was just trying to find somewhere. We should make one. We should do like Tech an guy. art attack no, or a Blue Peter no, style listen, video. This yeah, is what I've made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if Tech Guy was around, I hunch them would have got one built. Got one built at Battens. Yeah. We'd just knock one up. <laughs> no, but no, Tech Guy would have been on it, but he's uh, he was, he's been sunbathing in uh, Spain somewhere. Yes, the he Tech has. Guy. What have we got? Jamie says, can we get Callum up in the box? Yeah, he hasn't been up here yet. Maybe we try. Get who? Sorry, I missed that. The Welsh Dragon. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I, I think the problem is during the games, though, like, yeah. it's, it's tricky, but um, like that's why the Beast was up here today, he's not playing, but maybe we do get him up here after this one. Yeah. Here we go. Someone's asked here, do you have to buy tickets? Yeah, if you go on to um, pingpod.uk, you'll see, you'll see where you can buy the tickets to come here, guys. So, yeah, we're based in Bristol. Oh, yeah. Straight at the hip. I actually like the idea that Callum's going with of playing either float serve so that Hugo can't utilise all that backspin that's yeah. all on the ball. Either go float or top or long fast. Yeah, it's, love it. Yeah. Commentator's yeah. curse. But <laughs> again, I'd rather he did that than he comes in and just butchers this touch receiver yeah, no, like, no, you're playing your, like you're playing Ma Long. Yeah, it's a good observation. I, when I did that video recently with Dan Chu, Dan Chu said to me a lot of the fans, Dan, it's really important to like, do lots of float serves. Oh, oh, even off the net, wasn't that? Quality. But yeah, yeah it was, was interesting. Let's have a look at that, because that was exactly what you spoke about earlier. Mm. Where Callum's so good when you have him on the back. No, he's amazing at this shot. This yeah. is this is this is Callum's bread and butter. Yeah, look at that. See the quality he comes back? Yeah. yeah. Fast one. See Callum again, not not going too over fast on the receive, just spinning it. Getting Fantastic. It, it yeah. He's just ready. What's really important on the receiver server is not stepping in too early, so you're ready for that long ball, you know? He's very good at waiting. But then when it is short, he's very good at coming in and just playing a quality touch. Yes. It's the Welsh Dragon. Mm. You now he plays like Marlong. He's like the Dragon Marlong himself. Get a hold. Oh. This is, is what I'm talking about. Snake. Faith. Oh. Oh. What a point. What a point. We're going to join the replay halfway through. Look at that, the flick on the net. Hugo just using that feeling. Big punch. It's a great point. Oh. Callum there, frustrated. Oh! Oh! oh. This time Hugo pulled off the Callum. Woo. Should we have a look? Let's get that replay like up, wrong. Joe. Wrong not to. Hugo absolutely loading up the backhand. Flip. Oof. Bang, bang, look at that. Yeah, it's quality. Imagine being able to play like these games, <laughs> these guys, for just one game. Ooh, ooh. Worth Dragon. Yes, looking, looks like he's okay, but... We need a timeout here, I feel. In the blink yes. of an eye, we're back to 8-7. Mm. Timeout, you called it. What a just level these two are playing at. Amazing, amazing stuff. So like both are now really finding that like click within the rallies are yeah. all crazy. Yeah, even, even the ball flicking off the net and they're both just adjusting and yeah. the ball back in. Let's have a look. What other questions have we got? What's your vision for the next five years? That's a great question. Someone asked well. that, though. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Awesome. You know, for me, right, it's about maintaining just content, okay. like maintaining just getting great content out there. Like, that's all, you know what I mean? Because that's the hardest thing. Yeah. And I don't know where it's going to go, but it's like, like okay, we're in the ping pod. It's amazing. Look at the, the environment we're in now. It's so yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. We can do this live stream and I'm loving it. And it's just about, let's keep maintaining the momentum. You like momentum? Yes. Main, maintaining Make momentum. Consistency yeah. and momentum. Yeah. You know, we had a chat the other day, didn't we, about uh, wanting to host a table tennis game up in a hot air balloon. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. That would be that epic. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah. That would be a lot Red Bull did it in skateboarding. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the crowd down there. It's fantastic. I mean, this is what it's all about, isn't it? Everyone's having a great day on a Saturday, either watching it from around the world or here in the pod. Yeah, big, big shout out to Ping Pod as well. I and mean, what they've put on here is it's fantastic, yeah. the technology. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Callum then feels like he needs a good serve receive on this. I feel like Hugo's going to try and pivot early. Oh, that's a brilliant receive. Oh! Look at the Oh. 
We need Cam's forehand. Oh! What a point. Let's have a look. We join it again midway through. Callum again slipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an ice rink. <laughs> look at this. Hugo just I mean, unleashing yeah. bombs. I mean, there is a lot of quality on Hugo's forehand there. Yes. Laced. Great point. Eight all. Are we expecting any world-class players for the next 10 years? We are definitely. Absolutely. We're going in the market. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Callum. It's, it's, it's reading when to play hard and when to play yes. slow, right? And Callum pounced on it. He saw the weakness in there from Hugo on the receive in first early. What do you do now then? Do you play short backspin knowing that that means you're going to get a very difficult third ball back like that last point mm -hmm. and then have to take the opportunity later in the point or do you try and force it early? Let's see. Well, fantastic. The half long, yeah, well, it's good. The half the half, long float. Yeah, it's good. That's a great serve because uh, Hugo's in decisive. He's stepping in for the flick, but, but it's very hard to flick a half long serve. Yes. And it gives here Welsh Dragon two match points. It's a great shout. Adding timeout cards to the screen. Yeah. Not a bad idea. One of the other things to the millions of things on the to do list. We'll <laughs> chuck that on there. Get it to Roger. Hugo got a lot of joy from these long fast serves. Another half long. Yo! Massive! Massive! Oh! From Callum. I thought Hugo's going to take out the ping pod floor then. That is a huge win for the Welsh Dragon. Beating Hugo Torngren. Three love. Puts TTD 3 2 up. That's huge. Absolutely massive performance there from Callum. Massive. That's what the Welsh Dragon is all about. Look at him. Look at this. The crowd loving it. Loving it. It's loving huge. it. And we had a couple of questions earlier about. Uh, why is Tom not number one? Why is the Welsh Dragon mm. there? That's why. Mm. Look at that level he's just played at. Class act. Fantastic. Look at the junior editor down there as well with the camera straight in his face. The G content that's going to yeah. come out is going to be fantastic. Junior editor is just thinking about the highlights. It's going to be a great highlight of this. Yes. Amazing, amazing. What a win. TCD then. In the ascendancy. 3-2 up. Massive game next. Tom the Frog versus Martin, right? Yeah, it's huge. This is a big game because we know Martin can play unbelievable table tennis. Frog's just got to just keep chipping away and do his frog things. You know what Martin is like? I was thinking about this. He is like the Mike Tyson of yeah, the table tennis he world. Is. He's coming out there to knock you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, He's a not strong boy. Yeah. No. It's so awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. whether Frog can stay close to the table yeah. and he can absorb that power and start to manoeuvre him about. Absolutely. That's going to be the key. That's but huge. I feel like if Martin just hits that zone, it's going to be very difficult to live with. That's it. Again, it's why it always goes back to it's like all these matches are so like 50 50 because one of the players is bringing their best to the table. It just yeah. makes it so tough. Yes. Someone actually mentioned it. Should we live stream our local league? Oh. I'd love to see the chair in local league live stream. I, I mean, mean, why don't we do that? It would be a different would, level be a different, of play. Different. Would the people want us? Can I, I'm actually curious. Would people be interested in watching our local league? What would we do? Would we stream it from Instagram just live? I mean, no, we just, we got we set up here. We've got, we just have a camera. Um, this yeah. is fantastic. I mean, why not? We could, I mean, we could why do not? it here, give it the full yeah. shebang. Yeah, we give it the whole bells and whistles, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like. Someone said yes. If okay, would love I'd it, watch I mean, it. I, you know what? I think if we get more than ten, if we get more than twenty comments that people would watch it. <laughs> oh my God! There's a market for this, Joe. <laughs> oh no! It's gonna be a lot of work midweek. <laughs> German doing a veteran run at the top. We would be we've interested. Got, it's free content. If you just like it, don't watch it. This is fascinating. We've got some fantastic characters in the Bristol League as well. Oh Daniel Petit God. is in here. Yeah, absolutely. Daniel Petit. I'm going to say this out loud though. I'm going to use this as VAR to show you how illegal your serves are. Sir. <laughs> It's coming for you. You let me. <laughs> My guy's got a league. It's because he's from the previous generation of table tennis players. That doesn't uh, mean you get to serve well, like you know, in 1970. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my God, people want the local league. I have to take a photo of this for, for proof to the team. Holy. I mean, the instant replay would get used for donkeys only. That's very true. And Chairman vs Ring in one of the most watched matches. Yeah, it's true actually. It had like 500,000 views that match. Yeah. Good production is more. That that's hey, that's a good quote. A good production is more important than the table tennis. That's what we've been saying. These videos that we could go, the Mr. Beast style videos. Mm. That's what's gonna. Yeah. That's what's gonna be fantastic. Yeah. There you go. Wow. There is some love for the local league. There is love for local league. Yeah. Yeah, we got we got equipment review coming out. What well, we got? We got a uh, Jorgen Person review coming out. Simon Gauzy Blade. The Sintiliac's coming out soon. Lewis is in there saying that he's a bit biased, but he wants to see some international choppers. I already suggested to, uh, to the gaffer earlier. I was like, 
why don't we go to uh, Greece and see if a certain chopper <laughs> yeah, feels yeah. like playing in the pod sometimes. <laughs> yeah, too, right? But get Jonas down. Yes. Yeah, what yeah, a yeah. beast. You know Dane, right? Dane said that he thinks he can beat any chopper in the world. <laughs> so I want to create a video, right, of Dane versus Ruin Phyllis. And yeah, just, you know, I mean, and just make it happen. That no, because be... Dane is being genuine. So Dane, Dane is like, no chopper can beat me, <laughs> and I, I, I believe him. Like he is so convinced with it. You know what? And I'm like, bro, Ruin when... Phyllis will, will rip you apart. He's like, nope, <laughs> I'll beat him. Like every um, every time, like we we um, when we went to play the the Swedish team in in Sweden, and yeah. um, they found out that we all got to start with six points head start. Mm. There was a really funny comment. I don't know who it was. One of them made the comment of, we're playing against Dane, mm. and he's starting six love up. And it might have been Yun Person. I think it was Yun Person. I Yun was like, why is he starting six love up? I played him last week, <laughs> and he was 1-0 and 7-3 up on me. Why am I... <laughs> that is hilarious. And it was at that point that I went, the Dane is quite good, actually. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not the, Dane actually, the Dane actually kind of like messes up that 6-0 thing sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need to do a different... Yeah. yeah. Let's see what we got going on in the comments. Tobit wants them recorded as well. Tobit plays in our league. That would be great. Yes. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. That's a shout out. He used to be in Bristol playing with oh, us. Oh, yeah, my man. He's great. Yeah, fantastic guy. Fantastic. Uh, there's Ask for a DHS long five blade. Maybe that's a mm. review. That yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yang Wang. That'd be a good uh, good video to see. Yeah. We've got Dane, Dane here. Look, only Jonas maybe. Yes. But Dane's calling out Ruin Phyllis. You know what? I think Ruben or Jonas, I, I'd love to see, you know, where you spin up really heavy, as heavy as you can, and mm. he just chops it back. I'd love to know if you just put your back back, whether it almost rips your rubber off the blade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that it would just, just drop like, straight down. Like, yeah. It would, it would just get fizz right down. Right, guys, a gaffer's calling me out. I'm back in the uh, pod. You are going in. Joe, Final it's one. been so much fun. Let's do that. You're smashing it. I'm loving it. Is guys, this, thanks for tuning in and got watching music this. playing in there. That sound like it, doesn't it? Someone's playing the Rocky music down yeah, there. Yeah, that's guy. definitely Tez. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, guys, in our next production, we're gonna have like a light show and everything. I we? Like, yeah, the neighbors next door is an events company and he loves table tennis and he said, I'm gonna just gonna kid it out for you guys. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna get better. This is fantastic. Right, thank you very much, Dan. Get down yes, there, you guys are get supporting the frog. Let's go. Let's do this. What is the score, Ask Mohammed? You can see it in the top left. So TTD, 3-2 up. In truth, all of those sets have been incredibly, incredibly close. Could have gone either way. Still right in the balance here. Martin, for those of you that don't know, we gave him the big, the big, uh, the big build up earlier. He is like the Mike Tyson. He comes here to hit rockets, hit bombs. And it's going to be, as you can see, whether Tom can absorb that power and start to manipulate the ball and move Martin around the table. If he just plays straight into those hit zones, it's going to be a very difficult match. Oh. Have a look. It's again exactly what we were talking about. Lots of side spin on this ball. If you check there, side on the ball. And that one, you can see it arcing left. Martin takes an early 3-1 lead. What do we got going on in these comments then? Felix asks, how big can our team be? Three are playing in one match, but how many can be registered? That is a very good question. Um, I'm not actually sure there is a limit because we also have the silent assassin Amir is signed up for us and the founder as well. Big long fast serve, Martin reacted well. Come and play at Halifax Table Tennis Club, we would love to. One of the ideas that we have for the summer is to do a bit of a tour coming around UK clubs. Tom trying really hard to pin Martin into the backhand there. Would pay to watch Dane versus Phyllis, so would I. Good serve, Tom just misreading it. Yeah, you would need three layers of glue for sure. Yeah, I think that's in relation to uh, when one of those world-class choppers chops it at you. Yeah, I can only imagine the amount of spin that they put on the ball. 
to be honest, trying to receive Pargarel serves was a lot like that. You feel like you'd read it and you'd go, that's topspin. And then you'd close your bat over it and you'd nearly lose a rubber in the process. Wow, from Tom. A side of him that we don't often see, that aggression. Bat up high, short stroke, take the ball early. Oh. Oh. Martin Jasper in the comments saying, Martin's a decent player. I think that's underplaying it. He's a very, very good player. Stylistically, this is, I feel, quite a good matchup for him. Tom can't play his normal game. Has to be aggressive like that. Has to take the pivot. The drum's going. Dan mentioned him earlier. Mully there, head of fan engagement. Do a video of the best rubber of the year for a budget. Yeah, that's a great idea. The chairman bluff. 7-7, seven, seven, we are tied. Martin did very, very well there. Tom forced a weak pivot out of Martin and then tried to pin the backhand. Martin's ready position. Too solid, though. He was there, ready and waiting. Covered the backhand. If there is one area where you think the frog can do a bit of damage here is Martin will always swing and he will always swing hard. If you can continue to mix and not make many patterns, mix up the spin, mix up the placement, you can try and start to get into his head. Put a little seed of doubt in there every time Martin goes to swing that forehand. I ate them. Great point. Two serves then from the frog needed to save this. Again, Martin, very much like the pocket rocket, you'll notice. Once he's fired up, his level goes up five times. But there. Clever. Half long, difficult to read serve. Just flicks the net and goes long. Martin takes the first. Difficult, difficult set there for the frog. I think the frog can get a little bit of joy going wide forehand. So in that, that final point, I think it was at 8-9. Uh, Tom forced Martin wide forehand. Martin got there, played the forehand, then frog played it back to the backhand. Actually, if he keeps going into that forehand corner, force him wider and wider. As you look at the screen now, where I would want Martin being forced is closer and closer to the umpire, closer to that ping pod sign that's on the wall. Um, let's have a look at the comments. Eric, I see a lot of controversy around serves. Yes, so this goes all the way up for our game, right? Of you can't shield the ball. Uh, what's a straight toss up? Does it need to be flat palm? I think a good area for just world TTT to go into is potentially some kind of technology like you see in cricket or like you see in Hawkeye in tennis, where there's an AI function that is, uh, I don't know, 15 cameras around the back of the court and they're watching at all times from the uh, receiver's point of view. If that ball goes anywhere out of vision for him, a marker then signs and a light comes on the table, the umpire can, can do it that way. I think there's tech that we can do that. Joe, you said about doing a tour of UK clubs. Would you consider coming to some of the Welsh clubs? Absolutely. So obviously we're both we're, we're based very, very close. Um, myself, I played in the Welsh League with the Welsh Dragons' younger brother last year in Ronda. So very, very, uh, very close with some of the Welsh clubs. Is Tom ranked in the seniors? A, uh, he is. I don't actually know his exact ranking. I believe it's somewhere around 16 to 18 in England. Very, very high. Fast arc review soon, yeah. The boys need to do it, they're aware of it. Oof, let me throw it back down. Oh! Whew. We very, very nearly 
Got a sports center clip there, an ESPN viral shot going all the way. Look how close this was. <laughs> Join it back at a big point. Let's have a look. Two points back to back. We just missed the end of that one, which I was talking through. Sorry, guys. Look at that round the net from Martin. That's what I mean when we call him a decent player. He's very, very talented. Bringing out the party tricks. Arden doing very well there, holding that backhand and applying pressure back to the frog. Again, I think with frog, one of the routes to victory for him can be to mix this pace mid-rally. Not everything fast, fast. Mix the spin, mix the placement, mix the pace, I think could be really, really key. Why don't we have the Dane? So the Dane plays in Denmark and he is currently league locked. So if you play in Denmark, same as the Beast for playing in Germany, you then cannot play in the highest league in England. We hope it's a rule that's going to change. We hope as the league gets more and more popular, um, that, league, that rule will then change and we can start to bring even better players in that are already here. That's what I mean. Martin hitting his head. He knows it. He's saying to his bench, need to be smarter than that. And I think that's an area that Tom can start to win these battles in. Really slow balls, heavy spin. What setup does the frog play with? He has the cyber shape with the DNA Platinum's hard. Absolutely loves them. It's a great serve received from Martin. But again, you saw it, the heavy, slow spin, the dribble. Just slow ball that in. Martin's gonna have to adjust to that. called it before. Dr. Tom Maynard with his PhD in tactics. You have to have a plan A, a plan B and a plan C when you play against him because he's going to have the same for you. Beautiful. Again from Martin, short topspin serve there into the backhand, baiting the flip from Tom. You gamble, you pivot and you hit a rocket. Who is better, Dane or Callum? Look at the net. Who's better, Dane or Callum? I am not going to say anything for spoilers on a future video. Though I'm sure if Dane is in the comments, he has a view on this. Has any of the TTD team switched to Dignix? Yes. Uh, Dan uses it. Beast uses it as well. A bit of a donkey. If I had the graphic, I'd be showing it on the screen. Martin on the fish. Always important if you get kicked away from the table, far away from the table, do your best to put spin on the ball. Don't just hit the ball flat. You see, if you can grip it with top spin, at least that way it's going to land on the table and kick towards your opponent. Great backhand punch. Tom then, three points to seal this second set. It's a short float serve. It was a nice idea from the frog. So again, we tend to go short float serve. So meaning you put no spin on the ball. Very difficult for Martin then to read because the motion looks exactly the same from Tom as when he puts heavy backspin on the ball. So sometimes you come in and you realize at the last moment there's no spin on the ball, it pops up high and they come in and flick. Swedish League allows people to play in other leagues because Troll does. Yes, and the same for Tom Jarvis. Our uh, England number three plays in Sweden. He's just signed up to Brighton. 
Massive from the frog. Ties it. 1-1. One, one. Big backhand. You saw. Apply the pressure. You can't afford to just sit back and passively block against Martin. He's too strong. But yes, Swedish League lets people uh, yeah, play in those other leagues. Tom Jarvis, really exciting signing for uh, the SBL Premier Division because he's just signed for uh, Brighton Club. So he's going to be playing there. But yeah, it's with the Danish League and with the German League, unfortunately. Uh, so that's why the Dane and the Beast can't be with us. The same for Damien, who plays in the American Leagues and in the French League. Um, yeah. What questions have we got in here? We need a donkey sound in the arena to be played. The gaffer's just coming back in. We definitely need a donkey graphic, I think, to come up on the screen uh, that comes through. Joe, who is my favorite player? Very, very good question. I would say either Trolls or Kokiniwa, because I like the creativity. I like someone who does it a little bit different. Um, what do we got? What's going on? We got any questions for the gaffer? Are we able to get Callum up in the commentary booth at some point? Uh, Should we give it maybe. a go for the final set of the final match? Uh, not this match. Not no, this one. Not no, this not this one. I mean, I mean, oh, oh, the pocket uh, potentially. Okay. Yeah, well, potentially we can we can maybe get get Callum up here for a few words. Yes. Um, yeah, he's he's our star player at the moment. Two wins out of two, putting us in the lead. But now all about Tom the Frog here. Yeah. Let's have a look. What else have we got? Zuzin was the goat. He was the goat to watch. Some of his, uh, some of his rallies were absolutely insane. Yeah, this is a this is a big match now. Yeah. We've got one all. Third set. Martin to kick us off. Great serve received. Good touch there by Tom. Sets him up for that whole rally really there. Exposes Martin wide forehand. Yeah. Clever play. Yeah, we all love to get them. We all hate to be on the receiving end of them. <laughs> We've got a question, Gaffer, is your leadership role with TTD full time? It feels like oh. it is. Got a big rally here. Tom doing very, very well there. Punch off the backhand and then sounded a little bit top edgy and he just reacted really well kept the ball on the table wins the point <laughs> I call that shot the frog splash goes all over that one the five star frog splash yeah looking good here 4-0 in his third set it's very good he's recognised the need to not just be passive yeah Martin's He's going to get big shots on, that's, that's inevitable. I mean, there was that great round the net shot, wasn't mm. there? Just after he'd missed the behind the back shot. We almost, but, we almost missed it, believe it or not, because oh. I was doing the replay and talking <laughs> through. We <laughs> were devastated. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think, I think Tom here, Tom, as long as he stays solid, as long as he's, he's unpredictable, he's clever in his play, I think he should have this match. It's those but, ones. Yeah. I yeah. think it's those ones where he can just heavy, take all the pace off the ball and load it up with spin. And it then forces Martin to try and do something different with the ball. He can't just go straight through it. Any news on a possible match with Pongfinity? Keep your eyes peeled, because something is in the works, right, Gaffer? Yeah, something is in the works. We are hopeful. We are. Uh, it's going to be in the new year at some point. We just don't know when at this point in time. But yes, we are very hopeful to be working with those guys um, in the new year. So yeah, as Joe said, watch this space. Another brutal net there. Great serve from the frog. Again, we always say the same thing when you're learning serves, always set them up from the same position every single serve so that your opponent never knows what's coming. 9 3 now to the frog. He's looking very comfortable in this set. Yeah, good long, long push there. We know that Martin likes his forehand. He got caught out on the backhand side there. There's that forehand going on. Good play put into the middle. Tom with six Ooh. set um, points here. They're going to lose the ball here. It's just gone uh, behind the back table leg. Let. We need a 
Yeah, we need some kind of <laughs> we need device, a don't we? We need a scooper for this kind of thing. <laughs> One of the negatives there <laughs> of, uh, of this type of table boarding. Got a couple of questions. We're going to ask. We'll, we'll answer them once we're. Uh, we'll answer them in the, in the turnaround. Yep, Tom looking strong here as he gets ready to serve to take this third set. Change serve location there. Served it from middle as well. Something that I always like to see from a player. Same serves, but just from six inches across the table makes a world of difference. And just been in. Takes it well. Takes that third set. Sets him up very nicely. Goes 2 1 up. Our TTD will start. Lucas asks, the TTD going to have another JBL team? That's a great question. It's something that is always on our mind to get back into the Junior British League. We've had great success there in the past. That's where a lot of our players have come from. That's where the Beast, that's where Dane and Silent Assassin first formed. So we would love to do it in the future. I think this season we're going to focus on the senior stuff. Um, but yeah, hopefully in the future we want to bring some more juniors through. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, are TTD getting any new players in the January transfer market? Is there anyone <laughs> that the gaffer's got his eyes on? Well, the transfers do end at the end of this month. Um, so we have signed on another player, uh, just in case, uh, Sung Ming Cheng. Um, so he's a bit of an unknown quantity from TTD point of view, um, but he's a great player. We might see him at the, uh, the, in the next half of the season. Fantastic. And Lola's asked, are we going to get uh, Pitchford? Liam Pitchford, man, that would be an acquisition, wouldn't it? <laughs> Pitchford, we've got great, great links with Pitchford. You know, we're, we're really big fans of him, <laughs> of Liam here. Um, the fan getting the players ready for the fourth yeah. set. Um, never say never, right? No. I mean, you, you just don't know what the future holds. Good. Uh, I don't know if you all follow Liam uh, on Instagram, but he recently, unfortunately, shared a highlight on his stories of someone hitting the most crazy backhand past me. And I messaged him saying, oh, man, we might be teammates. <laughs> it was a great shot. Man. It was. Yes. Oh, brutal. All the luck it feels like going Tom's way. Really, really hard when you're in Martin's position where you've done the right thing. You've got in heavy spin into the hip and it just flicks. It breaks your heart. Yeah, first point back as well after losing a set. You want to go back on the table confident. Get an edge against you. He's holding well here. Oh! You could see Martin was waiting. He swung his back all the way back there and just missed the table. Oh! It equaled out. One for Martin. Right idea though from Frog, sending Martin straight up the line into wide forehand. Serving from the forehand side there now, Martin. Pushing him back well, Frog dominating the table with those backhands. Gets another point on the board. 3-1 in this fourth set. Yeah, that's good placement there. Aggressive. Martin looking a bit dejected now. Are you taking a timeout? Yes, he is. He is. Let's go back to the uh, questions. Uh, yeah, how, how, we had a question from Felix earlier on that I didn't know the answer. How many players can we get registered to this team? So we have, we also, we obviously have the three playing today. We have Dan as well. We have the mm -hmm. Sun Assassin. Yeah, yeah. Is there a limit on how many? You can there have? is no limit on how many you can register. However, in order for the results to count, each player needs to play at least three times in the league. So it stops teams just signing up wow. a really good player, yeah, a ringer, yeah. as we would call them, um, from playing in a grudge match or, you know, a, um, an important match. Um, so in order for those wins to count, they need to play uh, three times. So, yeah. Any challenges planned with Adam Bobro coming up in the future? Very good question. We always want to work with, uh, with Adam. He was actually in the chat earlier giving he us was. some love. Yeah, yeah, he was. So, yeah, I mean, Dan's... Dan's had some videos in the past with Adam. We would love to do more in the future with him. Um, and again, I think that's another one of stay tuned. I hope our benches are well supported. <laughs> the crowd have been loving it today. Here we 
go. As, as a player step back on to the court. Tom looking to serve again. He's looking for that middle position. Sets him up nicely. Oh, it's a great backhand. Yeah, you could see straight from the off, he knew exactly what he wanted to do there. Frog, get that forehand in, pivot on, and win that point. He's looking strong here. He's looking confident. That's a frog we like to see. Oh, read the serve very well. Yeah, seven one up. Command in the play now. Martin just can't get a look in. Can't get those big shots of his in the game. Slight flick of the net. Net, net call there. Big Cho there from Tom as he senses this win is on the cards here. And if he does get this win, that means an overall TTD win. Second on the bounce. Big spin. Oh, Sim Martin back. Yeah! He's getting ready then, wasn't he, to pounce there, Tom. He's going to take that right off a of bounce. Didn't need to. Goes 9-1 up now. I'm wondering if we're going to see any kind of exhibition from Martin. We saw earlier, he's got them in the locker. He does. It's just whether or not he feels like he's given up yet. Mm. Don't feel like he has just yet. After that one, he might feel like he has, though. As Tom takes 10-2 lead and gets eight match points. Oh. There we yeah, go. Using, using the short float. Yeah. So, I think Martin was just about to go into exhibition mode there. He dropped off the table. Tom didn't get the memo. Here we go. Oh. Yeah! Frog, massive. Takes out Martin Johnson, 3-1. And puts TTD up 4-2, which means they win this team match. Two on the spin. Massive. What are we saying, Gaffer? It's fantastic. Happy as Larry for that win there. Tom getting two wins in the match. Fantastic stuff. And yeah, another win on the board. I mean, it was a, it was a tricky start to this Premier Division season. We always knew it was going to be tough with two losses to kick us off with. Yeah. And now we've turned it around. We've got two wins on the trot. Let's go. Yes. And I saw some comments earlier saying about relegation. There is relegation in this division. So it's really key that you start picking up wins. The match against Drumchapel was absolutely key to get the win on. Both teams sat at the bottom of the table. This now is, again, moves you further up. This was the battle for fourth and fifth. So, again, absolutely mission critical to win. Yeah. We still have one more game, though, right? We are not done. We are not done. In the pod. Just yet. No, we've got Pocket Rocket up against Colin Dalgleish. Scottish international player. This one has got juicy written all over it. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Pocket Rocket hits the bombs. Colin Dalglish, as we saw earlier, lots of feeling, very creative. Yeah, let's go, let's go check out what we got in the comments then. Lots of love, great match, congrats boys. Fantastic. Chris Cotton asking about 11VR, whether it's a useful training tool. It definitely is a way that you can keep your eye, and especially if you're just learning the sport, helps you a lot. The one thing that you miss from it, which I assume they're gonna be uh, developing in the future, is the feedback on the racket. So as you hit the ball, you want a little vibration like we would in real life. But other than that, it's pretty much those, there, right? Those guys at 11 are doing fantastic work. I mean, they're, they're, they're always updating. I mean, you can have it, you can, you can put the table in your own environment now, can't you? Um, it, it really is an amazing piece of kit. So yeah, if you can't play much, I mean, that is playing table tennis yeah. um, it's massive. as well. So yeah, it's huge. We've got a heck of a heck of an atmosphere down there. It almost makes me want to stop the stream <laughs> and go down there and sit myself. Get down there, Joe. Yeah. Yes. Where can I get yeah. the team shirt? That's that's a very good question. Ah, uh, the team shirt. So this year's team shirt is not available um, publicly. Um, we're hoping that that is going to change at some point in the future. We are working hard to make that available 
um, to, to all of our fans. Yeah. Um, but right now, it is just for the team and crew. Yes, definitely something we need to sort for next year, though. We definitely yes. need to get some training kit out there, the match shirts for sure, yeah. Um, what else have we got here? General question, do we think there'll be more pimple players in the near future? It's a tough one, isn't it? Because I think that style of play, um, you know, it's, it's hard to it's hard to coach it as well. Um, you know, you need kind of specialist coaches that know exactly what they're doing in regards to that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you just don't see many players, do you? In, many men, in the top many ranks. men. Yeah. yeah, women obviously. Yeah. There's they're, women stay a lot closer to the table and punch. Um, so especially on the backhands and things, I I would love to see more pimple players, uh, especially long hips. I think variety is the best. The best thing for the sport, more players like a Giotis, uh, like a uh, Ruben Phyllis, um, yeah. more, or, or um, uh, like Mateus Falk. Yes, someone with it on yeah, the yeah, yeah, completely yeah. unique. I think it's way when better they, for the sport as well. When they, you know, when when Mateus can get his that forehand in, he just just neutralizes yeah. the opponents, doesn't he? You know, so so effectively. So yeah, yeah I'm. Personally, I'm all around versatility. I love the different styles. I think that's that's one of the great aspects of the game that we love. Um, so I'd love to see more of it. Whether or not I'd like to play against more of it myself, maybe not. Um, maybe not. Um, I just remember we're going to try and get Callum in the booth. Um, I might just leave Joe to it just for a moment. I'll see if we can get Callum up to answer yes. a couple of questions. If you guys do have any questions that you want to ask TTD's number one, the Welsh Dragon, pop them in the comments now. And when we bring him up, he can answer some of those for you guys. Peace out, Gaffer. Luca says at the Cardiff GP, uh, there are a lot of young pimple players. Yes, it's good to see. I think it's only good for the game. I'm sure pimples will still stay relevant at kind of the lower levels. It's just becoming increasingly difficult. Oh, look at that. Pocket starting off strong. Um, yeah, I, I, I think pimples will always have its place in the same with anti-spin. It's just becoming increasingly difficult to get to pro level with, with those types of setups. Oh, yeah. it's bringing out the chop blocks already. I think this is possibly what we're going to see is, is Pocket doing what he does and uncorking rockets and Colin maybe taking a slight back step and just controlling and trying to move Pocket about. Talking about versatility, come and see the outdoor scene here in Berlin. You know what? We actually got first-hand experience of the outdoor scene in New York City. That is a video that's going to be coming out. there lucky flick uh, yes the uh, the street scene the boys put money on the line and were challenged to the public in New York that's a video that's going to be coming out very very shortly pocket here then starting strong we said earlier on he's not normally a fast starter which is true he normally has to get wound up first Starting off, 4 2 lead. It was it was a donkey. It's unfortunate when these very good players just. Uh, oh. Again, a lucky break for the net, for the TTD team. It's a beautiful serve. You want to talk about a serve that's half long, that to your opponent, if someone serves it at you, you're not sure whether it's going to come long or whether it's going to touch twice. It's almost the perfect serve from Colin. Heavy spin. <laughs> B 
Beautiful backhand from Pocket. Colin just doing well to manoeuvre that ball then into the forehand side. Pocket with the serving today. The gaffer's going to have to get him on serve practice, I think. Another one in the net. Again, good feeling. Great feeling from Colin. A bit of an awkward ball, but deals with it really, really well. Keeps it low. Ben says he's up in the north of Wales. Where can he get some decent training? Oh, it's a beautiful backhand. Uh, ben, my suggestion would be to go to Table Tennis Wales or go to Table Tennis England and have a look for local north clubs up there. There's a lot of good ones. Another beautiful backhand. There's a lot of good clubs up towards kind of Merseyside Way um, that I know of. So yeah, there'll be somewhere there where you can get training. Playing with pimples and anti helps you understand it better. Absolutely. That's exactly what we thought was going to happen. So Pocket takes those two back steps. Colin does not budge and just manoeuvres the ball about. Let me throw it onto the booth camera just real quick. We got the frog in the building after a massive win. Happy with that one. Happy with that one. That was huge. Yeah, I was pleased I could get that win over the line. Yeah. We didn't yeah. want this one to be 3-3 three, three and then pressure a lot of pressure on pocket, you know? Yeah. Martin as well is one of those players that when it all clicks together, he's almost unplayable. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Some of the shot, the shot quality is unbelievable. Get Callum on already. I'm going to send uh, Callum up soon. <laughs> yeah, he's struggling a little bit on serve receive here. Collins do as well. Uh, doing really well with blocking that first back and then moving it to... Oh. And doing that. Oh, it's big. Collins back on. Sometimes it's just absolute Mr. Whippy. Takes the first set fairly comfortably and true for 11-7. Let's have a look then. What we got going on in the comments? Uh, do, 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 do. Dan breathed magic into the table. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Is there any pathways to joining the TTD team as a player? Oh, I like it. The only pathway like is basically send us a message and say you want to play. And then, yeah, we um, we spoke earlier about the importance of getting the junior British League team back in. 100%, yeah. Um, obviously, that's where the Dane came from. That's where the Beast came from. That's where Silent Assassin yeah. came from. So, yeah, we, we definitely need to get that going again. And, yeah, we're looking at potentially having, like, a second team in the future as well. So, sort of, like, the A team, B team, and filtering it down. That's yes. something that's... Maybe in the pipeline, we'll see. Yeah. The Frog, how is the level in UK compared to Belgium? Uh, maybe quite similar, to be honest. I played in Belgium a long time ago. Um, I think the highest league in Belgium is stronger for sure, but then after that, probably very even. Mm. Very, very interesting. Pocket very stiff right now. He needs to relax. It's quite difficult for Pocket because he plays his best table tennis when he's fired up. Yeah. So that would probably be my more... Rather than relaxing him and loosening up, is getting bouncing, getting the blood really going through his system, getting noisy and showing. Full of energy. Yeah. Thank, excellent play today, Tom. Thanks, Mike L. You so, were flying. <laughs> I had to be against these guys. That first ball oh, yeah. the spins, I was having loads of fun with that. It's not super fast, but it's so heavy. Like the spin, it just doesn't look that spinny, and you block it, and it goes to the ball. Hmm. Comes down from the Scottish mountains with uh, <laughs> yeah. a lot of spin and snow on. Spin. This is better from pocket. Getting in. That's. Oh! That's good. Yes. Pocket got to be careful not to when he does choose to pivot, not take it too late. Yeah, it's almost behind him sometimes, yeah. and then he can't get any purchase. Exactly. He takes all the pace off it, and then. Well, it's got time. <laughs> Lucky. I saw a question in there a second ago, but I've lost it now. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, that was a massive choke. Let's have a look on the replay. I can feel the pod vibrating from up in the commentary booth. There's How so good is the atmosphere, atmosphere down there? It's amazing today. Oh, That's huge. So low. Changing the pace beautifully on it. Oh, God, it's so rough. Tom, do you still play in Sweden? No, actually, not at the moment. Um, I had a little boy recently, so travelling to Sweden is uh, not that convenient right now. So just in British League. <laughs> Where is the captain? The captain's taken a little bit of a sabbatical. He's gone away and got married. Um, 
He was actually here in the audience, wasn't he, a few weeks ago? was, back. the last home game. Good to see him. The thing with Cullen is, a lot of players in this situation, the match is already lost. Yeah. And a lot of players, maybe not a lot, but some players could switch off and think, you know, what's the point? But Colin's a sort of character, he won't do that. He's a fighter and he'll just, yeah, go right to the end here. Pocket serving's been a little bit... It's a bit uh... ropey at times, yeah. <laughs> Hit and miss. Oh, yeah. Like sometimes fantastic and then other times it looks a, a struggle. Oh, oh wow. That's a world-class service. That's crazy. Yeah, Pocket's just struggling. Receiving serve, but also... Getting on the front of the yeah. way he is serving, yeah. That's all cool. We wouldn't be surprised if we see a timeout called sometime shortly here. Yeah, probably after this point, mm. potentially. Don't really want to be 2 0 down against Colin because he's a very solid customer. Yeah, surely now. I'll let you change the camera. Bench looks flat there. <laughs> probably tired and emotionally drained. Come on, Pocket. It's like a, uh, the bench there is like a graph from ball to most hair, isn't it? Going right That's right fantastic, to isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Callum will be happy, he's on the end there. Yeah. Good set of hair, head of hair, I should say. Very surprised there's not a timeout coming. Feels like all the momentum we've caught. Colin at the moment. Mm. That was Obviously good. That up. was so good, yeah. What's happened here? Oh, it's just, just a towel break. Colin really playing to his strengths, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. He's got a ton of feeling. And when you have someone in his pocket who hits the ball hard, but he has got quite big swings and he has to step back to take time. If you can stand there like like Frog did against Marty, if you can hold your ground and redirect them, you can get a lot of joy doing it. There you go, the beast the is off the bench there, yeah, trying to bring some energy to the crowd. Hey. Whoa. That was an interesting serve. Ball toss went up to the lights and back. It was. Nice serve, nice serve. You were doing those earlier as well. You're doing them really well. Long fast and then the backhand cross the court straight after it. Yeah, so sometimes. Oh, here we go. Oh. Sometimes against players who flick a lot or are very good in the short game, it's good to like throw in the long serves just to. Not let, even if you don't win the point, sometimes it's just good to get out those patterns of them always stepping in. Yeah. Switch to the other side to see the serve. Really struggling. He it's is. Just flat. It's just flat. Collins on cruise control. Looks like Pocket's it. not going to the bench, maybe. I think he's taking the slow walk there, the long route yeah. round. Think. He's going to try and fire himself up, isn't he? I think I've just seen on the camera there that the Welsh Dragon is making his way to the commentary booth. Is he? High demand. <laughs> yes. So Any questions you've got for the Welsh Dragon, guys? Get them in. Throw now. them in. Yeah, yeah, another really strong, really strong showing from my one and twos. Come on, Pocket. We know you've got this if you get stuck in. Yeah, he needs some big chose early on here in the set, I think. I'm get gonna... the crowd behind you. Get the drum going. Yeah. I'm just going to let the Dragon in. <laughs> Here he is. Do you want to put your headphones on? Yeah. The Welsh Dragon, the TTD number one. They've been asking for you. Yeah. How's that feel? It's, it's Massive good. win, that last one as well. Yeah, it's a good feeling. You know, I played, I've played. i seen him play before. We practiced together in Sweden a couple of years ago. Um, but yeah, it's good to be asked by the fans to, uh, to get on the, yes. the commentary booth. You're a member of the team now. Yeah, Pocket's got some work to do here, huh? Feels a bit flat. Yeah, yeah I think you know, Colin's really good around the basics. I think at the minute, you know, he's just struggling, struggling with uh, getting that ball on, but I know, you know, he's not going to give up. Yeah. Doing exactly what we just said about him doing, showing nice yeah. and loud. Get the crowd going, get the crowd in. Working for you. Tapping the head, saying he's thinking about it. Any comments for the Welsh Dragon? Shout them out, guys. Any questions? There's been a lot of talk actually for your equipment. What, what bat do you use? 
So the equipment I use is the Super Viscaria uh, yes. ALC uh, in a flared handle. And then on the forehand, I use the Dignix 09C. And on the backhand, I use Dignix 05. So I've just recently, well, I say recently, I've changed to the 09C yeah. recently. Um, yes, I like it. You know, it's good. You can get that grip. You can get that first quality spin. So, yeah, it's been, it's taken time to get used to it because yeah. it's a different feel, you know. It's, I think they've tried to get a bit more like that Chinese rubber. Yes, we were saying that. A lot of your, the arc on your forehand in particular. Hook is starting the, uh, the launch sequence. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, a lot of the arcs on your on your forehand they go through so flat, almost like a like a hurricane style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think working on that in training as well, you know, getting that first that first spin as low to the net as possible, yes. and then looking to play stronger than on that second ball. Good from Pocket. Pocket standing his ground, giving Conan a little bit of his own medicine. Happy to maneuver him about instead. Got a question there. Why don't you do more chop blocks? <laughs> <laughs> Not enough feeling for that. Keep the ball on the table, that's the main thing. Not enough feeling for the chop block yet. Oh, oh lovely backhand. Have a look. Pocket starting to feel it. Colin going to the backhand serve. This is what Pocket does so well, though. Stringing together these backhands. Beautiful change of pace. Back in here. Mixing up the serves well. Anything that you really want to add to your game, Callum? Yeah, that's a good question. Anything? Oh, that, that's a <laughs> tough question. Um, I would think probably similar to Pocket, actually, you know, the use of that back end more. I think, mm. you know, in training it's good and then it comes to a match and I'm a little bit more safe on it. So I think, yeah, just learn, just learn that fly and... I think when I'm playing my best, you know, my backhand's going yes. good, my forehand's going good, and it just all comes together quite nicely. Yes. Just going to watch oh, Pocket hopefully close out this set here. I think he's done brilliantly here, Pocket, you know, not to get, like like I said, I know he's not a given up character. Oh, oh yes. There he is. <laughs> Let's have a look at that one. Oh, he put some hot sauce on this. Oh, he went extra hot at Nando's. Look at that. <laughs> That's what he's known for. Pocket yes. boxes in his backhand. There we go. What a change up. It shows you how quickly table tennis can change. Exactly, just momentum, yeah. right? Exactly, yeah. I think in his first match, he played You know, he played really good. Um, and he was lucky. He was unlucky to lose out on that one. Yes. Uh, I think maybe you know some of that frustration might have come into the first couple of sets in this yeah. second match. But... You know, he's just got to relax and play every point and that, that backhand is... He just needs 11 more of those, yes. I think, in this next set now. <laughs> Talk to me as well. We filmed the TTD Knockout Tournament a few weeks back. No spoilers, but you did have to face the challenge of the chairman in the first match. Talk to me about how was that for you? To get into the mindset of chairman just talking <laughs> nonsense at you all morning. How did that feel? Yeah, it was... You know, it was good. I, I watched back the stream from the Saturday. I know he's yeah. asking for me. So <laughs> when the balls came out and you know we drew each other, it was it was good. Yes. And uh, no, yeah, the... no spoilers on results, <laughs> by the way. I wonder who's going to win that one. No, the match the match was really good and enjoyable. <laughs> and yeah, he's a brilliant character, chairman. For the only spoiler I will give is the donkey graphic is going to be used <laughs> a lot in that match, and not from the Welsh Dragon. Back in then. Can the pocket carry on? With a bit of an edgy ball. Oh. To be fair, I've played Colin a lot of times and he's got a backhand of his yeah. own. If he starts letting that go, you know, it'll be a, it'll be a great battle of the backhands. Oh! It's a taxi! Oh. Umir, calling the taxi for Colin. I'd love to see it. <laughs> Yeah, Colin start. Oh, oh no! <laughs> yeah, Colin started to bring out some of these aggressive shots against the frog late on. Some of the backhands he was hitting there were beautiful. You wonder almost why he doesn't do it more often. 
Yeah, I know. Like I said, Collins is a very consistent player, but I think, again, same as Parky, you know, once he gets that ball and he just starts letting it go, he's uh, they're both really strong players. And yeah, it's just sometimes it's just that mental side of things, not letting you play how you want to play. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be safe. Yeah, he's a very good server, man. I think, I think looking to other people, you know, he's got a different sort of service routine to other mm. people. He throws a lot of high toss serves, yeah. he catches the ball really slow, almost like um, Vladimir Samsonov, like, yes. you know, he's catching that ball with a lot of spin. Oh, that's a good save for himself. Yeah. It's a nice pocket save there. Yeah. Yeah, there's something about those high toss serves when the ball goes up and you have to wait an extra second than you used to as a receiver for it to come down and impact <laughs> that almost throws you off. Yeah, I think, you know, mix up them serves. I think during my game with Hugo, that service was so key, you know. Yes. I think in the match against Pocket, again, service was so key and he's a great server, Hugo, and yeah. lucky to get over the line, I think, in some of those sets there. <laughs> Yeah, his serve receive as well is very good. You can see the amount of movement on his back when he's like touching short his forehand. You can tell they're really, really ripped. Yeah, yeah, he really gets under the ball, Hugo. I think again, I, I think he, I thought he was using a different type of rubber, which is quite hard. But I did have a look, and there was the 09C as well. Oh. Um, so I think you know a lot of people are changing to that now, uh, and I think touching is one of the things that they're really trying to push on. And the 09C, oh, that's nice. Beautiful. Great shot. There's a comment there about the Welsh men's team struggling right now for players. What do you think the reason is and what can be done to improve it? Well, there's a, well, you know better than, than anyone else what the team is and who the players are. Yeah, I think at the minute it would probably be myself, uh, number one, and then I'd probably say Josh Stacey, who plays the para side of things at number two, with Harry Doherty at number three. Yes. I think. They're both playing, you know, full time, probably playing 20, 25 hours a week. So hopefully in the next couple of years, you know, it's, it's a young squad. That's the main thing that we've got going for us. Yeah. Um, and yeah, in the next couple of years, hopefully we can get back into those tournaments yeah. and playing against, you know, other top countries. Very, very exciting uh, women's setup you've got as well at the moment with Anna coming through and Charlotte seems to be just flying. Massive there from the pocket, giving it the chose. But yeah, the, the Welsh women doing fantastically at the Commonwealths. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, they were really unlucky to not get that bronze medal, I think. And and again, they could have got to the final, you know, with their close game against Malaysia. But I think Anna, brilliant, brilliant player. Only 17 as well. Yeah. And again, for Charlotte, you know, she's been, been playing full time for many years. So it's a really strong team. And, you know, on the back of that, they've got Lara, Danielle. So we've got a lot of people coming through on the women's side. Yes. So. Yeah, looking got Darcy to as well, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, looking to replicate that on the men's side, hopefully. <laughs> oh, good save. Yeah, probably went her out. Yeah. <laughs> How many hours do you practice a week, Daniel asks? Uh, so, uh, Daniel, I'd say probably between five to seven. Oh, that was close. Five to seven hours a week at the minute, currently. Used to be a lot more, but I've taken sort of a, more of a coaching role working with Table Tennis Wales at the minute, which is really exciting to be a part of. Um, so yeah, so I don't practice as much anymore, but I make sure it's quality when I do practice. So I think that's probably one of the best things for me at the minute is it's always quality. Quality, not quantity, as they say. Oh, oh yeah, that's <laughs> world class. Let's hit the replay, more for the uh, response. I changed the camera just at the perfect time. Look at this. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That is world class, says Pocket, and he is not wrong. That's a great receive again. 9-9. Nine, nine. It's a great receive. Get into the bins every six points. Just a chance to gather your thoughts, get the sweat off your face. Massive opportunity for Pocket here to uh, bring you back to the fifth set. Yeah. It's been an exciting game so far. He's had a lot of joy serving long here. I wonder if he's going to try a similar thing. <laughs> Colin steps oh. in. Fantastic from Colin. Very unlucky from Parker, but they're very unlucky. Fantastic from Colin. 
always important when you get forced back, as you'll see him here, he's getting forced back. You have to step in. Look. Yeah, that was the game changer there, wasn't it? You know. Oh, oh. And we, <laughs> we missed it. Oh, no. I'm so sorry, guys. Colin takes it. 11 9. There you go. Tight match. Colin brings one back. TTD then. 4 3 eventual winners. We're going to sub. The Welsh Dragon out. We're going to get the gaffer in to just sign off. Someone said it here, and I agree, you've been a brilliant addition. Just give us, give me an idea. Who was the person who snuck into your DMs <laughs> to say, come and join the team? Who was that? Founder. It was the founder. Was it on Instagram? Was yeah, it? founder on Instagram. Snuck in, wanted a bit of practice, but on the team now and great great to be here great to be on the current country yes. thanks to the fans for asking for me we are loving having you here man long may it continue brilliant, brilliant. wins today right brilliant stuff. Thanks, let's guys. get the gaffer in guys any final questions for the gaffer anything you want to know we're going to bring him in it's huge the gaffer 4-3 win we actually missed the final point uh, you missed then. it. Oh well, it I was, was, wasn't I was much. Playing with the instant replay. Wasn't much to. Uh, wasn't much to net, right. it, was a, it was a pocket, unfortunate miss serve. It is a yeah. yeah. But Another big win. Massive win. Massive Huge. win. Yeah, absolutely yes. brilliant. Propels us to higher levels in this league table now. Yes. So yeah, two wins on the board. Yeah. Fantastic. It's massive. Yeah. Huge. We had, uh, we've had great chat from everyone in the, uh, they've been having questions. Everyone's been asking about upcoming videos, opens, how can they apply to be part of TTD? So <laughs> massive thanks to all of you guys watching on YouTube. Massive thanks to all of you guys watching on TTE.TV. I'm just going to share a graphic. We've so got the schedule, schedule for the next, is next matches. Up. Yeah, so we've actually got the match that we've just played, North Ayrshire, that was today, and that was on Table Tennis Daily YouTube channel. Our next outing is going to be an away match at Bats in Essex of the UK, and that's January the 13th. You can catch that match on TTE.TV. That's the only place to watch that match before we are then back at the home of Table Tennis Daily in Ping Pod, Bristol, against Ormsby, the current league leaders. I'm massive. not sure how they've got on in their match today that they were playing against yeah. a, a Brighton team, a strong Brighton team. And then we do play against Brighton for the last match of this round of the season. That's not the end of the season, guys. Just to let you know, that's just for last matches that have been scheduled. Beautiful. Anything that you want to say to the people before we sign off for today? Just a huge, huge thank you for supporting us, for watching today, for engagement. It's been fantastic. Um, we wouldn't be here without you guys. Uh, so yeah, absolutely amazing to have you all. And thank you again. Brilliant. TTD out. Well done, Gaff. Fantastic job, Joe. Yes, guys. So we just want to take a quick break from this stream to shout out to our partners, BetterPlay.ai. Now, BetterPlay is an awesome website which highlights your full match down to just the points played. We're going to be using the software to edit this stream and release it as a highlight form, so stay tuned for that. So, guys, if you want to improve your table tennis today, head over to BetterPlay.ai or click the links in the description for more. Face, he knows that was a big one.